Drakenheim is no more. Struck by a falling star, the city bathed in eldritch fire on that woeful eve. The tumultuous aftermath brought chaos, families torn asunder, and a kingdom shattered. Fifteen years later, monsters stalked the haunted streets of Drakenheim. Caught amidst rival factions struggling to rule the rubble, three unlikely partners venture forth into the crumbling city in search of riches, renown, and revenge. Good evening and welcome to Drakenheim. This is our weekly Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition live stream campaign. My name is Monty Martin, running the game as Dungeon Master, and, and I'm joined by my very good friends. Uh, I'm Kelly McLaughlin, playing Sebastian Crow, the half-elf shadow sorcerer. And we're also joined today by... Jill Denitis, playing Veo Senya, the tabaxi gloomstalker ranger. And Joe O'Gorman playing Pluto Jackson, the human battle master. Uh, tonight's episode of Dungeons of Drakenheim is sponsored by Skull Splitter Dice. They sent us these amazing dice that, of course, we roll in all of our games, and they are awesome. So definitely check out Skull Splitter Dice. You can head to their website, uh, which is skullsplitterdice.com, and use the discount code DDUDES to save 15% off your first order. Welcome back to the ruins of Drakenheim, the Battle of Temple Gate is over. The Hooded Lanterns and the Silver Order have united with our heroes and taken the gate after a day of vicious fighting against the gnolls that inhabit the Temple District of Drakenheim. The battle won, but not over, for skirmishes and smaller fights against the roving warbands of gnolls continue to break out around the city as the hornet's nest of monsters throughout Drakenheim have been disturbed by the encroachment of the forces of the Silver Order and the Hooded Lanterns. What will happen in the days and weeks to come in Drakenheim, none can say, but violence has not stricken the streets of the city like this in some time. Our heroes retreated from the battle to return to Camp Dawn, the fortress, the fortress encampment of the Silver Order to recuperate following winning the gate themselves. And they have now been journeying back towards the barracks of the Hooded Lanterns to debrief with the Knight Captain Theodore Marshall and the Lord Commander Elias Drexel. However, along the road, they have been intercepted by their old friend, the tiefling mage of the Amethyst Academy, River. She frowns and sighs as your conversation continues. It seems like we're at a bit of an impasse, but I want to work with you. I think the Academy and all of us can work together, but I don't know what you all want anymore. I mean, I've been pretty clear from the beginning what I want, and that's my father, and to bring him back to help sort out what Drakenheim should be. So that's me. I just think that there's more options for how we can make a better Drakenheim than just having the Amethyst Academy rule over the whole city. And I don't think any one person, unless they're an heir to the throne, that makes sense. But I think that we're going to need to work as a team. I feel like there's a collective of people that want what's best for this city. And we're trying to figure out who those people are. And River... I think you're a good person, and I know that you work for the Amethyst Academy, and I know that you are trying to stand up for what the Amethyst Academy stands for, but when all the chips fall, I feel like we might need more than just the Amethyst Academy to look after Drakenheim. I sometimes don't know what I want, but I think new Drakenheim we need to move past this pain that you feel this this uh this pain you hold on to about um being outcasts and being uh uh segregated around the world uh in your domains and 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 retreating into your world if you you have to 
Ooh. take a chance and open up. It's our only way to save this place. River sighs exasperatedly, and the expression on her face does that weird half smile, half frown thing that only a strange tiefling face can do, that very unsettling look that is, you're not sure if she's going to break into laughter or break into tears. <sighs> the Academy can work with the survivors here if they want to work with us. The Academy needs to get something out of it, and we'll need to have some pretty big concessions and terms as part of that. But if you want to make a difference in Drakenheim, well, you should know. The Academy is fascinated by Drakenheim and is fascinated by what's happened here. So many of us are working to try to understand what happened, to try to understand the haze, delirium. And nobody that's working on it is coming up with good news. As far as we can tell right now, the haze is going to hang over this region for generations to come. And if this, it doesn't matter if the Silver Order purges every last bit of delirium in the ruins. There will never be a new Drakenheim. The wound is too deep. And you three don't understand that. That doesn't mean we have to abandon this place. It doesn't mean we can't find answers. But Drakenheim is never going to be a living city. It's not going to happen. The Hooded Lanterns are fighting a battle against an enemy that doesn't exist. They, they, maybe you think going out into the ruins and killing monsters is going to restore the city somehow, but what use are weapons against the air that you breathe, the water that you drink, and the ground that you're walking on? This city is corrupted and polluted. We don't understand the relationship between the haze and the delirium. We just don't know. And until we know, even entertaining the thought of a new Drakenheim, that's delirious. That's a fantasy. The Hooded Lanterns and the Silver Order, uh, I did bring up the idea of working with the Amethyst Academy. They didn't <clears throat> seem opposed to it. They did say that they weren't sure what you were after and they weren't sure where you stood, but that they would be willing to work with you. I think what's interesting here is that it sounds like the goals of the Amethyst Academy are to find out what's happening with the haze and delirium, which does kind of contradict the views of the Silver Order who want to destroy the delirium. And the Hooded Lanterns just want to reclaim Drakenheim and find an heir to the throne and have this be the city that it was before. And I know that that's impossible, but could we not have an heir sitting on the throne well, the Amethyst Academy conducts research and we'll figure out what to do with the Silver Order when the time comes. And maybe we can work up to some sort of meeting of the three factions, a representative from each one uh, representing what they want from Drakenheim and hopefully come to a consensus. All right. I'm going to head back to El Emberwood Village. Eldrick is going to be here in a few days. I want you to bring the commander of the Hooded Lanterns and the Silver Order. Just them. To Emberwood Village. And a few more folks from the Amethyst Academy will come as well. And then we can talk. So wait, you want multiple people from the Amethyst Academy and the two leaders of two of the main factions of Drakenheim only. It doesn't really equal up. I think they should be able to bring some people. They can bring their entourages for security if they feel it's necessary, but we'll only meet with their leaders. Okay. That sounds fair. I think that's reasonable, and I think it would be hopefully a welcome change to the mystery of the academy also uh i need to find out information about my mother which 
when we do have that conversation, I want to discuss what was discovered about the mirror and what we know about that. Because the last mm -hmm. I heard is that you were going to go back and find everything you could and give me that information. So that's something that we should discuss at some point. I have, um, I have found a few things. It's not much. It's just some records from one of the other towers. But it seems that Leneth Eventide served as one of the archmages of Drakenheim for several years before she retired. <laughs> hmm. So if any if there's any more records of your mother, they're gonna be in that tower. Interesting. Your mom sounds really important. Yeah, much more important than I thought. Can I ask you a question, River? Was his mom's retirement sudden? Or mandatory? Or um, may I say uh, untimed? More like unheard of. I like that. I've never heard of an archmage <clears throat> of the academy retiring to private life. That seems... It's, it's, it's conspicuous, odd, but suspicious, and other words used by people that are strange. detectives. Elfish, <laughs> the elfish members of the academy have always been the most eccentric and detached members of the academy. They, there's very few elves left in the world, anyways, and whenever the elves are involved with anything, I mean, they were some of the first teachers in the academy. But they've always, well, the elves have been outsiders within a group of outsiders, even though they've been an important part. So, I don't know. It seems strange. She, all I can tell you is that it seemed like she was someone that had lived another lifetime even before she came to the academy and was planning on living another lifetime afterwards. And then I happened. Thank you. Hmm. That's actually valuable information, and now I know that that tower is somewhere that I have to go. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Maybe the the Archmage of Drakenheim was notable because they served on the council that used to rule Drakenheim and answer to the king. All of them had a badge of office of some kind. Maybe you can find your mother's old staff. I'll look for it. The previous archmage would have wielded it, so nobody knows what happened to him. So maybe you'll find some answers there, too. Thank you. Road River. trip. Road trip <laughs> to the tower. <laughs> not right now. Now, River... Just to show a sign of good faith, we're not a, we're not against the academy, but I think we are owed a little bit more information. I take out six large chips of delirium and I say, "Just to know we're still open to working with you." Well, thank you. And I hand them over. Then perhaps it's worth showing you a little bit about what you could be fighting for here. She reaches into her bag. Puts on, a, puts on one of her gloves, reaches into her bag, and she pulls out a one and a half inch diameter, perfectly etched sphere of delirium. She holds it out. We've been making this. And then she takes her ungloved hand and touches the orb. This is stabilized delirium. Does it look similar to the one that we saw in the mirror dimension that the demon was clutching? It does. River, did you go into the mirror? No, I didn't. But we've been able to find a way to charge 
the delirium down. Delirium absorbs magic. It is magic. It's dangerous because of it. But with the process that we applied, this is like a battery. Can we have it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh wow. boy. So it's safe to touch. Does it have did you learn anything about why I can touch the delirium in its raw form? There are the only thing that we know is that some who have been exposed to delirium for a long time, exposed to the haze, have innate resistance hmm. to it. It seems that probably you might have been, but the fact that you've survived probably says something about your biology that you're probably not willing to be dissected, are you? If I die, the Academy can have my body. Well, can thank they? you. Whoa, did you just... <laughs> I mean, like... For science. I mean, there's so many things that could happen with that. The, the, <gasps> it's fine. I, I should actually tell you the, the sphere of delirium that you're holding is covered in a very thin layer of glass that does protect it and protect you from the aftershocks of it, but it helps with an... It's imbued with another arcane coating, and you should be able to pull magic from it by attuning to it. So... It works similar to the potions. It's just that it absorbs nascent magic that you can then siphon off. Usually about every day or so, you'll be able to get out, more out of it. It seems inexhaustible at this point. Neato. I've got one last thing to ask, Riv. Have you heard anything about this Queen of Thieves? We've had dealings with some of her people. Of course, there's more than just you that have been finding delirium for us that we've been buying from, and that includes some of her people. Mm -hmm. But who she is and what she wants? Well, she seems like a petty thief to me. Follow-up question. Are you the Queen of Thieves? <laughs> I don't think the Queen of Thieves would have the delirium. She's mocked us before, openly. <laughs> about being like right in front of us. So I just wanted to just No, that would be it would be highly improper for a member of the Amethyst Academy to claim any sort of title like that. So So is that like a no <laughs> or like a... <laughs> You may want to that... do some digging into her cuz I think she's a bigger thorn in all of our sides than anyone anticipated. She's very sneaky and she can show up almost anywhere, which is one of the reasons I think Veo may have had some concern about the meeting. Mm. Yes. Um, she could be easily any one of your sidekicks, your mentors. It could be people that you've known for years. She's very... Well... Sneaky. Sneaky. So she's some sort of imposter. Oh, yeah. That's a great That's word. a simple way of putting it. Then I'll make sure that the Academy is adequately prepared for that. Yeah. If you need to route out some sort of rogue magician that's using magic or some or some form of sorcery to hide their identity maybe then we can help with you with something more concrete yeah if you ever come across some sort of device that we can shoot people with to make them turn into who they really are some kind of crossbow mechanism <laughs> that would be that's the only thing i could think of <laughs> Maybe like a thing you splash on them. I don't know. Glasses. Like Glasses would be good. Oh, yeah. By the just... by, speaking of <laughs> weapons, do you ever have any more of that meteoric iron that you've made that armor out of? Oh, man. I mean, there's a whole chunk at my dad's place. Is there? I thought we used it for... Did we use the whole chunk for your armor? There was like a lot. We'd like to try binding the meteoric iron to some delirium and see if we can charge up some weapons with magic that way. Talk to Papa Caratop. You probably have some left over. And where did we see some? I feel like we saw... There's some in the rat's nest still. My dad still has to have a little bit left. Like he, he had okay. a lot. I'll... He's also the best blacksmith in Drakenheim. I'll talk to Tobias when I get back to Emberwood Village. Yeah, we you... also saw the, the cult hi. of the falling fire with it. Did we not? I think so. 
I was looking and I, I don't think I remember storing any. I think we've given it all away. I think, yeah, we don't okay. have any but on that us. Chunk, but... Like it took an entire army of, of ratlings <laughs> to carry it over. So, yeah. so it's got to be, there's got to be some leftover. Probably. I'm glad we came to an understanding. I, think I don't want to upset you. I know that Brackenheim was home for you. And it can feel hard to lose your home. Everything that we've seen so far, it doesn't matter how many monsters you kill. This place is going to be changed for a long time to come. I know that, but I still think it could be in a better situation than being overrun with gnolls right now. And I do think that perhaps, going with what Veo believes, there might be people alive inside that castle. And we just need to figure out how to get there. Okay. We'll see you soon. Don't die out there. Not if I can help it. Thank you. Stay safe, River. Pearl of Power? It is indeed. It functions as a Pearl of Power. Does it have any negative side effects? It does not. Wow! Oh, I also... Okay, I didn't give... Just so you guys know. We still have 12 fragments and 3 crystals, which I believe are bigger. Yeah. That I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to give to River quite yet. But hey, yeah, that was a good trade. She also didn't give me any fish, so... I'm yeah, like, did we get paid or was the Pearl of Power the payment? That was the payment. I'm okay with that. But Thanks. the Pearl of Power itself is like... That's a big chunk of change. So that's huge. That gives I'll me an extra it. spell slot. Yeah, that's awesome. Awesome, sweet. Up to like a level four or something? I think three. Um, but you never know where this other delirium is going to come in handy for yeah. bargaining with other people around the city. No, so. I, I that was a very smart play there. And once River leaves, I just want to make it known that I still do not trust her. I, I I let it kind of settle, but I mean, it's is it so convenient that delirium will always stay and the haze will always stay and the academy just wants to save everyone, but they also make bombs and stuff with it? Like, give me a break, like. I'm I'm sure River's trying her best to kind of be like a the butter between the academy and everyone else, but man, I feel like I'm seeing through this like the glasses on your head. I was trying. <laughs> why, why did I try to I, make it something? Why did I try to make it something? Just um, I want I want you to keep in mind that River is not the Amethyst Academy. No, she she's not part of it, and she is one of my best friends. But the Amethyst Academy, I still have zero trust for. I feel like they have. I can agree with that, but their own intentions in mind. When this all comes crashing down and things go, however they're going to go, I hope that River can come out of it. I hope so too. I hope we have to make her make a decision between us and them, and she chooses us. I mean, I don't think that we're going to need mages in New Drakenheim, and yeah. uh, River might be a great option. I we also think... need somebody to do the bookkeeping, and I think uh, BJ Mel should be our. <laughs> 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 we yeah, should really sure pull from all the different factions. Like the Queen of Thieves could definitely come in die. Die. <laughs> die. Yeah, I feel that. Um, I think that I trust River, and I trust her passion for what she's doing. Um, she could be the butter on our end too, though. Yeah. And it sounds like she's two-way butter. Work in, yeah, two-way butter. Butter on both sides. So that way <laughs> she's working with the Academy to get a meeting. So she said she's going to try. And I think if we were meeting with anybody else from the Academy, they would say straight up no. So, yeah. Sorry. I might, I might have misspoke. I, I don't trust the Academy. Yeah. I have a good, I have a semi good relationship with River. Yeah. She keeps giving us stuff for crystals we find. So yeah. like that's like a great relationship. I mean, she told us about what they're working on too. But I am so I still don't tidbits. just the, the academy itself though. I have I have so many concerns about their their true intentions. Like their plan, oh, it just it, Drakenheim can't be saved, so we'll just make it a giant mine where we can make bombs and stuff. It's like, "Oh, how convenient for you. <laughs> how how that all worked out. Well, that's great. We'll just all leave so you can just go make bombs." I feel you, Get Pluto. I... I think River was as honest as she could have been. No, yes. she was. Well, well. <laughs> yeah, I miss, but yeah, I, I think she. She was honest as she wanted to be, which was more forthcoming than I think other pieces of the Academy. She could be more forthcoming, I... but I get where her loyalties lie. I don't know if she knows more than she told us. I think she. Knows I think she's more the Queen of Thieves. I think she could have been the Queen of Thieves, and she's just laughing at us, and we just gave her a bunch of delirium, and that crystal ball is just a ball, and you're just going to drop it, and it breaks, and you're like, "This is." I hope they at least look into the Queen of Thieves a bit more. I hope no. they're, yeah, eyes open. Yeah. Your conversation takes you back. 
<laughs> We're always through the Karen and Hills. <laughs> yeah, walking and talking. It's like Red Dead Redemption, right? You get on the horses and then everyone's just talking back and forth. That's where like 90% of the storytelling in those games is done. Just either in a car or in on between, a horse. Yeah. 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 A point A and point B. Um, and before long, you arrive through the outskirts of the sprawl. You can see in the afternoon now the it's become a bit of a colder of a chill day um the (laughs) as you've moved closer to the city a wet miserable rain has begun to fall oh that's new (laughs) (laughs) i always have continuing the the showers from the well actually was there was a thunderstorm the night the day before after the end of the battle, which mm. gave the reprieve to the soldiers fighting. And it lasted all through the nights. And so the, the the light rains have continued, letting a fog settle into the city, largely covering your approach as you head through the, the ru- outer ruins of the sprawl. You manage to avoid any of the areas of conflict. There's still the noises of battle being fought in po- isolated areas it's clear that while the knolls as a power have been broken they may be splitting off into smaller war bands roving around and here and there you look down an alleyway to see the angry eyes of a mangy humanoid scarfing down the ruined bodies of a knoll or whoever it's encountered before it grabs its meal and heads back into the sewers at times you even catch glimpse of small groups of ratlings as well it seems like all the scavengers of drakenheim have come up from the sewers to feast on the corpses that have been left behind but the city has not seen this many fresh corpses in some time who's the lord of the feast now (laughs) (laughs) it's us we are (laughs) (laughs) as you arrive back at the barracks you are welcomed with relieved sighs and cheers of victory by the hooded lanterns who recognize you though it is a cheer that is clearly marred with fatigue as it looks like many of the hooded lanterns are now on the second shift of double watch. And in many cases, as you come back through the barracks, you can see that the barracks is now being defended by a skeleton crew. There are not many people around. There's a few members of the Silver Order that are here as well, and a few members of the hooded lanterns that are manning the walls and keeping things secure. But as they catch up with you, they... A few of them say, many of the, uh, they say, we lost many good people. We've got many in the barracks that are being tended to and the wounded. We've got many more that we had to send that we can't even get them back through the city because they're so hurt. But we, we've held out through the night and things are going well. The Lord Commander is back here in the barracks and wants to speak with you. We'll go see him right away. Thanks, everyone, for all of your efforts in yeah, this battle. Yeah. Do a couple handshakes on the way. Like, y- you've done good. You've done good. Yeah, do I recognize, like, as I'm walking around, do I recognize anybody from the battle at Temple Gate? There's a, there, not many. The people that are still here were not, were either part of, like, the Vanguard or part of, like, the reserve force, mm. not part of the Vanguard or the uh, initial attack because. They've left people that are healthy, able-bodied, and not terribly exhausted to defend their their most important holding now. Um, once you come back to the barracks tower itself, all the members of the Royal Guard are still there. And Elena Krieger nods and winks and says, good job. Who's she winking at? Does she know you? Do, uh, do I know? Oh, no, it's her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, do we know this? Oh, wait a second. Is she coming she, on to me? She just, she just nods and says, I heard you do well. We'll chat later. I got to get back to guard duty. Have fun. <laughs> I hate the <that> queen. 
And you come back up to the Lord Commander's office, and you see him there, and he is looking rather hale for someone who is apparently on the front lines. He hasn't suffered many wounds at all. He's come out of this pretty unscathed. Hmm. He's not even bandaged up. And he greets you and says, Fantastic work. I heard about all your exploits. The explosions on the battlements itself. Quite incredible. Really amazing. Makes me wish we'd had more like you back during the Civil War. Maybe things would have turned out differently. Well, thank you. I'm glad our our skills and... and you know, abilities are finally being recognized for the true amazingness that we are. It was a hard fight. We lost several dozen good people. But whatever you did to make sure that Queen of Thieves didn't interject, Oscar Yorin didn't cause any problems for us, all those other enemies at large that we have didn't interfere because we were fast. And that was because of you. That charge happened and when we heard it, we were relieved, and all the gnolls came for that gate, and we got them right in a pincer movement, ventilated them with our arrows, and they broke against the rock that the Silver Order established. Fighting alongside them was an honor, and fighting alongside you, an even greater one. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate your kind words. I wish I had some way to reward you in a way that you deserve. But unfortunately, I only have to, I can only ask more of you at this stage. Oh. It happens. We, uh, I guess that's our lot in life, being what we want it to be in (laughs) Drakenheim. I suppose that's fair. Mm -hmm. We do have um, some of our own objectives. What did you have in mind? I hope it's a mutual objective. I'm very concerned. I met with Flamekeeper Ophelia Reed earlier, and she has told me the dire situation that our queen is in. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's not looking too good. I want to move forward with the cathedral, and then eventually to the castle. But if the queen, if Queen Lenore dies or goes mad, what are we fighting for? I mean, Lord Commander, I I think at this point it is safe to say that the queen isn't going to last forever and is in a tough state, but she might have heirs still alive in this city. We need to keep her alive until we can figure out who is next. I agree, at the very least. As much as I despise Oscar Yorin's work, it's keeping her alive. Can you make more of it? <laughs> I, I have some notes that I copied. To, I can try? I can try. I'll try my best. His materials are down there. Whatever left that he ran away with. Can you go and see what you can do? I can see what I can do. Is this going to be like an episode of Nailed It? And it's you (laughs) trying to recreate the potion? I'm going to blow (laughs) myself up, Pluto Jackson. I know it. I'm wondering (laughs) if this is where we need to bring in River. Because... Well, we did talk to the Amethyst Academy recently, and we're thinking that they might be someone who can help us with our goals for Drakenheim, especially with the queen the way she is. The Amethyst Academy exacts a heavy price for their help. And I'm not above asking for that. But if I can have an in-house solution for the queen, please just try. I'll try for now. I I will let you know, though, that we did um, make arrangements with the Amethyst Academy to potentially hold a meeting between their superiors and you and um, 
the leader of the Silver Order, the Knight Commander, uh, potentially to work out how the three of you can make a better dragon hunt. You are just full of surprises, aren't you three? Three, you three. We do. What we Fine, can. I will meet with the academy, and I, I will see what I can do in the lab downstairs. No promises, but my name's Sebastian Crow, and I am a potions inventor. <laughs> I think it's also, like, like since we did such time. a great job that you just told us we did, you know, you'd be a little bit more willing to meet with this. No, he is willing. Yes, I don't know. Yes, I, I, I okay. will meet with him. I just felt, felt a little bit and we felt like attitude a, there. No, nobody's <laughs> happy to meet with the Amethyst Academy right now, but we're going I mean, I'm, to. I'm happy about it. <laughs> Not really. Um, okay. Yeah. Leave it to me, sir. All right. Uh, this seems to be an adequate time to also mention that you three have leveled up. Oh! So I wonder if some of your new skills might come in handy as you embark down to this dank chamber where Oscar Yorin had set up his impromptu lab. You took Ooh. potions uh, adept okay. <laughs> at level <laughs> eight, right? Right? Yes. I took the ability to make delirium potions. That's no. no. Um, I didn't. That's not available. No. Um, uh, Veo, what did you take? So I leveled up in my rogue, uh, and I picked a um, oh, what's it called? Um, a rogue archetype, and I am a spellcaster now. Arcane trickster. Arcane trickster. I was like, the name. What's the name? I'm arcane trickster. So of course, with Veo's background, with her silliness, you know, when her and Sebastian used to roam around the city. Uh, she's become a little bit of a prankster, and now she has the skills using Mage Hand, uh, Minor Illusion, Prestidigitation, uh, Featherfall, Illusory Script, and Silent Image Ooh. to add to this mischief that she normally has. I taught her everything she knows. It's true. It's true. <laughs> Pluto, what about you? What did you take? Well, um, I've been studying as well magicians and magic users. And I've learned how to stab them when they're not paying attention to what's happening around them. I took Mage Slayer, dun dun dun, Woo. and I'm going to use that attack on uh, Sebastian here. <laughs> <laughs> I cast Mage Slayer attack. Um, yeah, I'm excited to. Pluto wants to um, make sure no one turns into a newt or a cat ever again, not on his watch. And Sebastian? I took Ritual Caster as my feat, uh, which gave me um, Find Familiar and Detect Magic. And I found that all in my mother's spell book. Okay. As well, after the Battle of Temple Gate and my amazing use of Fireball, Sebastian decided that maybe it was time to let loose on his magic that he deemed caused incidents more than helped but now he thinks maybe it's time that he can control that so i took fireball and firewall <laughs> and we're gonna see a little bit more of sebastian's incidents focused on the enemy so i'm excited as you develop these new skills in mage slaying ritual casting and arcane trickstering a few days pass working in Oscar Yorin's lab, trying to figure out, like, cobble together his notes while, while you, like, develop these new skills. <laughs> montage? Yeah, we have a little bit of a training montage. We'll say a, a couple days pass, like, you kind of work on work on this. And, Sebastian, during this time, um, you can use this time to add two more rituals out of the notes that, that Oscar Yorin and your, and your mother has. And we'll say that Effectively, because you have ritual caster, because you take this time, you could now, with the time and resources, brew potions. Mm -hmm. um, and as well, Veo, with your skills now as an arcane trickster, you can kind of act as a lab assistant <laughs> <laughs> to Sebastian. Only using my invisible mage hand as it goes. I just stand yeah. there and I'm watching. With Paluto being the, the security hand. force, if anything goes wrong, like there's, there's a rogue summoning. Wait, <laughs> does that he's mean about I can goggles pour... while we're, while we're yes. working together? Yes, you get an extra pair of goggles. There is also a scene where I'm trying to brew a potion and I'm looking through my mother's spell book 
and I'm starting to brew this potion, and then all of a sudden, a shadowy crow appears. And I'm like, this isn't a potion at all. Crow. There's a crow. What should I name him? Sebastian. (laughs) Sebastian the crow? (laughs) I mean, sounds oddly appropriate considering your name. Well, I mean, I'll put him on my shoulder. (laughs) So this little shadowy crow is now perched on my shoulder. And he looks like a normal crow. But if you look closely, he's made out of just flowing shadows and he has pure red glowing eyes and what will you be calling him oh man we're gonna make a game time decision on that this is the game this is the game time decision i'm going back and forth between sebastian the crow (laughs) or grim to go with my pet shadowy dog named reaper i think that's i think that's that's a good one yeah Yeah, grim and reaper yeah Yeah. (laughs) grim and reaper okay why are all your pets so scary (laughs) Uh, cause that's how my magic works. All my magic is infused with shadow no matter what I do. And that's just how it's going to work. But I made a crow. It's not a potion, but it's a crow. I yell down. How's the potion coming? <laughs> I made a crow. Does that count? Yeah. I think she'll like that. Great. <laughs> she I... doesn't need to eat crows. Now question. Please. What happens if I do eat this crow? Oh, that's a great question. Don't... Shadows have no <laughs> calories. Oh. oh, perfect. Well, that's great. It's like another, a healthy bite. Another ritual. Anyway, I'll, I'll think on that while we... Uh... I pet okay. your crow. Unfortunately, as you go through Oscar Yorin's notes, it seems that the material that it looks like, Sebastian... You could probably make this concoction. Um, But it's not a question of can you make it. It's a question of do you have the materials to do it. For the ingredients list calls for some pretty specific things. In addition to tabaxi blood, delirium, and eldritch lilies, there's a bit of a laundry list of alchemical components that are needed in order to make this concoction, which um, include um, things like um, the things like salt and soot, but bits of grave dirt, white crystal, onyx stones, lodestones, bits of various arcane components like sulfur and incense. Um, and even pieces of like an adder or an egg, a cockatrice eggshell, snakeskin, phosphorus, um, uh, saffron, and several bits of even copper and heavy metals. Did you check the so, pantry? Uh, I imagine that at first what I do is that thing that I sometimes do at home and it never works out where I look up a recipe online and I'm like, I have... 50% of those ingredients. So I mix those ingredients together and then taste it. And then I'm like, oh, I needed the other 50% of the ingredients. Yeah. You actually did that at home? Uh, yeah. I tried to make a uh, Thai curry sauce once. It didn't go well without, without the rest of Like half the ingredients. Don't mix soy sauce and peanut butter and assume it's going to taste good. And while Oscar Yorin has a oh, wide gosh, range it's... of components... It seems like he he had identified, in in his notes, he had also identified places where he might be able to find more supplies. Oh. Um, And was keeping a list of what he might need in there. The recipe does call for more eldritch lilies and for more delirium. So those will be the things that are continually needed. Um, but these specific components, um, the other specific alchemical components, um, he pointed to, in, in one of his notes, he notes that an old friend of his who died during the, the meteor strike named Manny Marco, um, he kind of circles it and said, Manny Marco uh, the note says that this crazy old coot used to smuggle out ingredients out of the Academy Tower to sell them on the black market. And he used to have uh, a little shop right under the nose of the Academy where he used to grow his own ingredients underground. And he's kind of like circled out and said, like, 
this this is if I ever get the chance, this is where I'm going to try to get to to resupply because it's one of the few places that you see on the list. He's actually crossed out other places in the outskirts of the city that he's visited to get supplies. Whereas this is one of the only places in the city that he circled out. And if we pull up our map, it uh, it basically lies in kind of the intersection between the Academy Tower and Queen's Park Gardens. Mm. Hmm. So between Ken and Queen's Park? Yeah. So we're going to have to go into some deep haze to get there? Yeah. Well, it sounds like that's also where we have lilies, right? We don't have any lilies. So if we could get lilies and check out this um, supply room. Yeah. It could be a two for one. Yeah. One trip. Two things. They call it the two for one. <laughs> Coin that. Asking trademark. for an update on your progress, the Lord Commander does volunteer to send some people out to find some more delirium and even to scout out for for the lilies um, as well to, to help out. But he concurs, my boys aren't going to know what's what's head from tails when it comes to all chemical ingredients. Mm. They can find a flower. They can find delirium. But if you can go. We'll, we'll, we'll go find the alchemical ingredients. I, yeah. uh, I've been studying this book and this book <laughs> and all of these books for a little while now. Nerd. <clears throat> Sorry, what was that? I don't know. Did I you cough? Something in your throat? Yeah, it's all this potion making. Go on. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think that I can, I can distinguish them now. And... Uh, I'll get what we need. I think that I'm a potion maker now. Sebastian the potion maker. Sebastian Crow, potion maker. And I come up behind Hero. you. And I press to digitate some pew, sparks so, behind you. Sebastian, <laughs> with, with your current knowledge, um, if you have the ingredients to do so, um, you can spend two days to make a potion of healing. Because you, you now have the knowledge to do that. Cool. Yeah. And if you, and given more time studying, especially Oscar Yorin's and your mother's notes, um, if you do get more downtime opportunities, you can learn more potion recipes a as you go. And then I'll provide you with a, with a list of like what you need to make them. Can I add just like a uh, alchemy kit and proficiency yeah. with it yeah. into my. Ooh, fancy, fancy. Nice. Um,. But you know what we'll need to go on this journey? Maybe some like rations, some like snacks. <laughs> they provide. Yes. <laughs> Just saying, as I'm walking, having like some nuts or something. <laughs> you go to the to convenience go? store. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, I get all this. I want that. I want that. I want that. <laughs> it's great. All right. Rations. Is there anything else that you'd like to do over over? I'll, I'll say that you can have a couple other days of downtime if you want to do anything else in this time. I just like to imagine that we are all learning our new skills. I'm teaching you how you would kill me if you had to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, stab me oh, in the heart. Oh, so when you're f focusing on a spell, I can stab you anywhere and you get hurt. Yeah, right? if I'm focusing on a spell, just stab me and I have a harder time concentrating. But if you stab him in the neck, it's especially hard to concentrate okay, stab in <laughs> i've neck. been stabbed in the Got neck it. and it, it's just hard to focus on turning yeah. somebody into a no a, slow down slow down probably like oh. the eye too like the eyes yeah the like eye, if i do this and oh, like oh, this is great you feel this a poke in your eye but i didn't like raise my hand up to do it and how do i know you're casting a spell <laughs> what, what are that? some uh what are some like um Freight, like keywords, like what? What are some things I can look for when I know okay. that you're about to cast a spell? If you see somebody doing cool things like this, and I hold up my wand, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or like, I literally do that again, and I press the digitate. <laughs> yeah, like more that, that kind of stuff. Wait, where? How long have you been able to do that? Since the uh, battle, I don't know. I, I tried to teach way you mage hand magic. like eight times, and you never could do it. Yeah, I can do mage hand, and you get poked in the eye again. <laughs> Where's your mage hand? Oh, here, and I like make it appear. Your mage hand can become invisible, Neck. and Neck it's invisible and... again. I, I, Im I imagine that Veo's mage hand is invisible because she hasn't actually figured out how to make it visible. <laughs> so it's invisible because she doesn't 
<laughs> know how to make it into an image. Into and then Sebastian, though, he casts Mage Hand and he can't make his invisible and he's really upset. Because you guys worked, yeah, you get it backwards. Like You, you taught focused. me all that you knew. And remember when we were trying, I was probably doing the Mage Hand. I just couldn't see it. <laughs> yeah, grabbing at air. I want an invisible Mage Hand. My Mage Hand's purple and sad. So how do I know if someone's casting an invisible Mage Hand? Like this. <laughs> Pokes me ah! Out. Ah, gee, I wasn't ready. I don't oh, know how you know. You, you just, just feel it, you know? The only thing is that the mage hand has a strength of one. So it's like getting poked in the eye by a baby. <laughs> it just, it, it just, it, it still touches, hurts. but no, it, still it still it's very uncomfortable. It doesn't ah. necessarily hurt. It's very uncomfortable. Yeah. It's like an eyelash, getting an eyelash in the eye. You're like, yeah. ah, ah, ah. You're blinking. <laughs> you just feel it like brush across your face, too. <laughs> Oh, it's touching me. This is going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> and you're just like waving your arm. <laughs> I'm actually not even. I'm just like standing here just staring at you intently. I'm what's, not impressed. What's touching me? Uh. <sighs> at, w- at one point during this, like uh, Petra, the Lord Commander, she's like, are you guys actually working down here? <laughs> <laughs> she stumbles up. In our, in, our, in our attempt to make potions, we've discovered that Veo knows magic. I learned how to make a crow. And Pluto knows how to kill wizards. Yeah. Don't mess with me. I can soil things. <laughs> you know, so can Pluto. We yeah. know that. <laughs> I also imagine that somehow, like, the cr- Grim the Crow knows when you're going to make a mistake and is just like, ah! <laughs> yeah, he's my, he's my other lab assistant. Can the crow have a pair of tiny goggles on its head? <laughs> oh, yes. Please. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So good. Like the aviator style yeah. cap. Yeah. <laughs> He's wearing a little yeah. aviator cap. Yeah. Oh, is that from Land of Down mm-hmm. Land Down Under? The Rescuers Down Under? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Birds with goggles. <laughs> <laughs> Almost as good as bird birds with arms. We'll okay, we'll get we'll get it. Yeah. We'll get it. Okay. So what's next? I guess we have to hit up that house. Yeah. I say, well, the the garden is pretty clear of haze, so I say we make it our goal to get there first. Well, the commander's sending people to get the Oh, flowers. the lilies? All oh. we need to worry about is the alchemical supplies mm. that are supposed to be in this house on our map. Yeah, but it's near Queen's Park Garden, correct? True. Uh, so we approach from the garden side. I say we approach from the garden side, so that way if we need to think of anything while we're going in, it's less time in the haze. From what we know about the deep haze where we needed to use one of those potions that we jammed into Pluto's chest, Mm -hmm. are we assuming based on where this thing is circled on the map that that's in the deep haze? If it isn't in the deep haze, it's definitely on the periphery. Mm. So we go in deep. How many of those potions do I have? I I think we have one left of the the, needle. No, I have two. Yeah? Two. Because we gave one away. Are those the... the The Aqua Expergio. That that is the Aqua Expergo, okay. Or Expergo, Expergio, um, and I still have four four potions of Aqua Delirium. I think I used one. I think that's three now. Mm. Okay, I'm just I'll deal. Let's see what I can do. Am Worst I, comes to worst, I can rope trick and get out of there. Am I gonna? The good news is, um, from what I've seen Veo do with her magic, if you if you poop everywhere, she can clean it up. This is true. By snapping her fingers. <laughs> I can't do that. Or I can make it worse. <laughs> no, I'll make it better, I swear. But I could make it worse. <laughs> Why do you keep saying that? But I could make it. <laughs> and then someone touches my face. What was that? <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I guess worst case, we're going to have to slam these into our chest. Yeah, <clears throat> it's not that bad. Yeah. It, it sound really bad. Yeah, it was really bad. It's, the, the shop itself, Manny Marco's... Um, shop is on the same street but further out than remember where you did test the aqua expergo Mm -hmm. it's the same street dweamer street Mm. oh no memories there no bad (laughs) memories not even any hey remember when we fought that goo monster (laughs) well and well me and veo like hung out in her portal dimension (laughs) while you fought it alone because of the phase it's for science I did it for science. I mean, I can run ahead and set up the the rope trick uh, in front of the shop just to make sure that if we need to get out of there, we can. 
I think afterwards we might need to take a stop at the tower because you know the side effects. Yeah. It's a long night. I'm quite aware. Yeah. It's a haunting moment in my past. <laughs> uh, I mean, we could hope that the shop has a bathroom. Yeah. Okay. We'll see what happens when we get there. Do you depart? Yeah. We let the Lord Commander know that we're going on a shopping trip. <laughs> and we'll be back soon to make some potions and uh, to please get the eldritch lilies and the other supplies we're going to focus on the alchemy supplies okay you travel out along from shepherd's gate from the barracks into the city of drakenheim again several days have now passed and more of the hooded lanterns are returning from the field um, bringing with them stories of continued fighting throughout the temple district. But over the pa- the past couple of days, they've said things have calmed down. We haven't seen it, seen a counterattack. You know, we're, we're, and everyone's getting ready for the next steps. Because of this, the area around the barracks itself has now been heavily patrolled by the hooded lanterns. And you were able to cross from, um, from Shepherd's Way uh, to Market Street, pretty much while seeing other hood, seeing some of the hooded lanterns patrolling along that way, and as you cross from Market Street into the air, the Academy District, the haze sets in once more, and you begin making your way towards Dwemer Street. You can all roll me a d six. Four. Two. One. Okay. As you approach Manny Marco's little alchemist's shop, the whole place is in tatters. It is a large, squat, square building that the roof has completely collapsed and caved in, destroying most of the upper level and filling the second level with rubble and wreckage. Shards of broken glass and spilled materials out all over the streets in pools that have collected for, for tons of time. You can see poking out from the rubble is an arm and the upper torso of someone who might only be Manny Marco himself. And it looks like his, the part of him that is sticking up out of the ruins has been eaten off by various creatures that have come over the, the course of the decades that his corpse has rested here. There's a w- large wagon that has been packed up by the building. And it almost looks as if the wagon was being packed by Manny Marco when he when the collapse fell on him. Like he was trying to make a break for it and then the building collapsed and crushed him. The and the cart by it is stacked up with a wide range of barrels and boxes, all of which have been completely ransacked. Beside the building is a large garden, which would have had several rote alchemical plants growing in it. There is a mangy tree growing up here, more rubble around it, and a large well as well. It's not covered. It goes down deep into darkness in the small dirt and the grass and the overgrowth of the garden itself. And as you approach, that is what you see. What do you do? Down the well. Down can, the well. I have something new that I can try. Okay. I, I read it in, in a book. Um, I might be able to send Grim in and see and hear through its senses. Oh, wow. I've never tried this before, but I might be able to. That's cool. You should try it. All right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's the worst that could happen? Stop <laughs> saying and that. My eyes turn pure black and roll back in my head, and I like collapse into Pluto's arms. <laughs> and <the crow laughs> just kind of like flutters, and I turn and I go, "I'm Sebastian Crow." So you can see the remnants of the building it, are almost half collapsed, um, and 
then there's the the yard itself um in front of you so you you've got the setting here we can bring up the let's bring up the camera show it off which way are we coming in from whichever direction you wish you said that's it (laughs) barrel okay so this is what you see laid out be before you um and you see the collapsed building the wreckage and the rubble and the garden and the overturned wagon and the corpse of manny marco uh around you as well uh, uh laying in the pile of, of the rubble as if he was trying to run out his front door which collapsed on on him mm. so sebastian you fall back into pluto's arms as you take your your sight and vision into those of grim um you're very comfortable because, of course, Grim is wearing goggles, and you're wearing goggles. It feels feels it feels right. <laughs> I feel just the same as Sebastian does on a normal day, but with wings, and uh, that's about it. Okay, where would you like to direct him? So first, I want to fly up to the second story of the building and just perch on one of the ruined walls and kind of examine inside the building. Okay. Grim perches up on the building, looks down and surveys it, and sees, um. The upper level here, the building is completely sloughed off, re- unveiling what was perhaps the bedroom or the apartment on the second level of the building. There's a few remnants of some of the furniture, but the bed has fallen down in the se- into the second level. Wherever the staircase was in all this, you, you can't tell. Um, but looking down, the store level that has been collapsed on the storefront of the building, complete rubble. But you can see that underneath the floor here would have probably been the storeroom or the back room, because that is where the door leads out to the garden, from which is fenced in by a wrought iron fence. So th- there is a part of the building that is somewhat stable and intact, that isn't that also isn't overflowing with rubble as well. Um, can I fly Grim into that area just to like take a quick look around? Yeah. Just like perch yeah. on like a table or something and just scout cool. the area. Cool. Uh, Grim can make a perception check. 14. Okay. Grim flies down into the, the ruins of the back storeroom. And again, the place looks largely ransacked, but you catch sight Buried underneath some rubble is a large, actually a really large cellar trapdoor. The trapdoor itself is is um, about four feet wide and four feet deep. So it's a big trapdoor and it has a heavy iron hinge that would lift it up. And then you can see that there's like an iron slat on the wall that would hold it open. And the trapdoor is actually positioned right by the door leading out that would lead out into the street such that if the street door was open and this this was opened you could go right out from whatever's down there into the street cool last thing i'm going to do is i'm going to fly out to the tree Mm -hmm. and just perch there and just take a look at the garden and i I doubt i can see down the well but just take a look okay looking around the garden you can see that it is largely overgrown, but dominating the garden are these massive purple, black, and green mushrooms. Some of them are really big, and they almost writhe the vines around them. I fly back, and I come back to Sebastian. Whoa, that was weird. As you do so, my hand is like right near your face being like, oh, sorry, you're oh. back. Oh, okay, oh okay. man. Okay, that was weird. Uh, guys, we have, uh, th- there's some mushrooms. There's some really creepy mushrooms. I'm concerned about those. Those are in the garden. We also have a uh, cellar door hmm. that I think might look interesting. But Down I didn't... the well. Down the well. <laughs> Why not the cellar door? I just want people to get on board with chance. Down the, the well. well. Down the well. well. I still, yeah, I still want to go down the well, though. Um, Maybe. 
You said there's a cellar door? There is a cellar door. So my immediate thought was, this guy is robbing the the academy, right? And it's mm-hmm. prime. Um, he's got to keep things hidden. Obviously, he's going to go down, right? Does the cellar door look a little too obvious? Yes, no. Was it an obvious cellar door? It was an obvious cellar door. No, nothing was hidden, although it is covered over by some of the rubble. You'd have to clear that out of the way to open it back up again. Because I think that that's right. Regu- like that's Only the one that he tantrum. wants to show everyone. If I was trying to hide stuff from magic people, where am I going to put stuff? I'm going to put it in my well. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, first I'm going to own a well. I mean, I can look down the well. I have. 90 I, feet of do you see seeing what, do you, down do you, dark places. Like, totally. Even his garden, that garden's going to be the throw-off garden. He's going to have a secret garden somewhere because he can't just ha- own a house in Drakenheim and have the Academy walking around being like, hey, is that all our stuff? And he's like, no, it's it's my garden. Uh, I totally agree with you. I do also want to know what's in the cellar. Yeah, we, yeah. we should go to both, but if we're looking for the Hidden ingredients, stuff. I feel like the well. Um, I, I would be careful, though, in that backyard. Those mushrooms looked like they were moving. Edible? I mean, maybe. Everything can be eaten, right, Veo? Mm. Some things That's something I learned once. from Veo. Everything it's true. has a... <laughs> I don't know if I would eat these mushrooms. But you could. But I could. This yeah. is true. It's, you know me so well. I, like, I just learn a lot. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys want to do first? I, I would say the safer bet may be the cellar. But it is under a crumbling building, so maybe not. And you know my chant. The well. <laughs> I mean, we can glance in the cellar, and if it, like, we won't spend hours trying to find a secret door or something. If it doesn't look like it's panning out, then we hop down the well. Cool. You first. Um, <laughs> <laughs> cool, 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 cool. That's what you wanted, right? You down I mean, the well? You, we can you always have this, drop you have the this crow there. thing that you, you just. You know, my crow can't see in the dark. Yeah, but you keep trust falling with me. So, like, I don't know. I'm just ready. You know what we can do? That was going to keep happening. We can tie a rope around your drift globe, and then we can lower it down to see ah, how far it goes. I can float it. I can float it. Oh, can you? Oh, beautiful. I think I can. I think I can just have it float. Is it floatable? Yeah, sure. It's floatable. <laughs> oh, um, magic. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see anything in the house, so I mean, I can move the rubble. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Magic's crazy. With this shovel. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> you go, I can move this rubble. You hand me the shovel, and I'm just like digging. <laughs> and after you dig for like a, f- a minute, I cast mold earth. <laughs> <laughs> to like sweep away the, <laughs> the um, Okay, so I think we're going we're gonna to approach the building. We're going to go to the cellar door. Do okay. we want to do it silently? Yeah, sure. And I'm grumbling about something about a well the whole time. <laughs> um, I, I would say... It isn't going very well. It's sure. not going very well, is it? <laughs> well. <laughs> All you hear is... Well. <laughs> well. We'll go We're to the well. We're going down the well. <laughs> I heard you. <laughs> well. <laughs> I say we, we try to tiptoe, but I don't think we need Pass Without Trace. No. <clears throat> I clunk clunk my way towards the cellar door. <clears throat> and then do you shovel it off or move earth it? I... I'm old. Okay. I'm old. I try to just. I try to just heave my way through it. I just try to. Okay. He lifts one rock. I lift the rest. <laughs> it's a heavy door. It opens up into a wide staircase that leads down into a small cellar room. The light from above flows right down it, and at the base of the cellar is a very small, fifteen foot by fifteen foot wide room. The way the rubble was, does it look like anyone's ever been in here since the incident? The dust in here looks like no one has been in here for years. Yeah. I'm going to turn on the drift globe. Okay. To light the way. What is there we... anything in the room or is it just... As you head down, looking down into the cellar, there are several crates and boxes that are stacked up against the wall and a series of shelves that have several vials placed on them is there anything in the vials yeah i start examining the vials looking at the vials there are there's nothing in the vials but there's also a pile of dead flies down here (laughs) there's five dead flies in here wait a second 
I start rearranging the flies. <laughs> There's got to be a trick here. I know it. <laughs> Freaking magic, man. <laughs> magic. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to start pushing walls and stuff. Come on, secret door. Come I on. put a fly in a vial and I shake it. You put the fly in the vial. And when the fly goes in the vial, it buzzes to life and starts flying around inside the vial. I Let it go. It yeah, let it it's go. It's dead. I'm going to repeat the Can process with another fly. With a different fly. We put a different fly in the vial. Okay. You put the fl- a different fly in the vial, and it also comes to life and starts buzzing. I do my own. So now we have two. Okay. Different One. vial. And when you let it out, it dies? Yeah. Can we fit people into these vials? Why are we down here? <laughs> <laughs> can we make a vial big enough to fit a person? How many vials just... are there? Uh, there are only five vials. Let's do it to all five. We put all five flies in the vials. As you put the flies in the vials, all of them, the buzzing of the flies becomes overpoweringly loud. Like, it's not just five flies. Like, it's it's a swarm of flies buzzing. But, as they buzz, the wall creaks open as the flies continue to buzz. Magic! <laughs> and you wanted to go down the well. I still want to go down the well. This probably just leads it to the well. It reveals a wooden door behind it. I knock on it. Anybody home? Go away! Oh my god, <laughs> there was not supposed to be... <laughs> I did not expect there to... Hello, uh, who's there? Who? Who goes there? You're not supposed to be here. Go away. You're not supposed to be here. You go away. The master's out. I'm no the business. Master. Store closed. No, Manny sent us. You hear you hear the voice turn to another voice. Who's Manny? I don't know. It doesn't sound like anybody. Ask them if they have any gems. Do you have money? Gems? Yes. Are you a customer? Yes. Yes. We want to buy things. And then you hear the voice behind this, the, the say, say, shut up, we're not, you, you hear the voice say, shut up, we're not actually going to sell them anything. We'll just kill them and take their money when they get in here. I, I have my wand pointed at the door. I take my, my bow out. We're here to buy. Please open the door. <laughs> we're nice people, we swear. And then another voice goes, we haven't had any customers in like 15 years. What do you think happened? I don't know where the master is. I don't feel okay about this. I want some gems. <laughs> We have lots of gems and food and money and food, Not food to actually. trade False. for what you're selling. Oh, I should have my stuff ready too. <laughs> we look at you, we're like <laughs> Oh, 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 get ready, get ready. Okay. You can open the door if you want to come and buy. I mage hand <laughs> the door. No, stop. Your magic is no good here. And I kick it. <laughs> Okay, you kick the door open, um, and we'll just uh, change. Let's take our break here. We'll change out the set, and we'll come back in 15 minutes. And we are back. Thank you very much. We've had our little break. We've changed out our set, and we are ready to rock and roll again. Before we delve into the ruins again, a big thank you to Axe and Shield for providing us with the awesome gaming accessories we use. You're about to see the initiative tracker, I assume. Uh, he also makes some amazing flight stands. And um, is this Kickstarter done now? This Kickstarter might be done. But anyway, check out Axe and Shield. Uh, he makes amazing stuff. Uh, also, a big shout out to Tabletop Audio for all of our ambient music and sounds uh anything you're listening to is from those playlists it's all free uh it can really set the tone for your own game Uh, i know it does for ours so check it out www.tabletopaudio.com it's all free and thanks to 100 years bore for the amazing narration in our intro video always introducing the amazing adventures we have in drakenheim check them out here streaming on twitch And if you're enjoying the stream and you want to help support our work, you can check out our Patreon by following the links below or at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. 
We have a very phenomenal Discord community exclusively for our patrons, where you can discuss your favorite role-playing games, get character and DMing advice with us, Mm -hmm. or even talk about uh, Drakenheim and your favorite fan theories or your favorite characters or what happened last time on the show. So be sure to check that out. Tonight's episode of Dungeons of Dragonheim is sponsored by Skull Splitter Dice. You can check them out at skullsplitterdice.com. And uh, if you want to get your own set, you can use the discount code DDUDES to save 15% off your first order. With that, let us return to the ruins. We are below Manny Marco's alchemist shop as Pluto Jackson has kicked open the door, revealing... Behind the hidden door, uh, the behind the hidden wall, was a door that you kicked open after arguing with the voices beyond, and you can see before you a well-appointed and rather well-organized alchemist's workshop. There is a large, um, inert cauldron in the center. Several cabinets filled with various alchemical formula and ingredients. And a well-appointed alchemist table with a great set of equipment and alembics and various chemistry, alchemical sets. There are two doorways leading out of this room. One at the end of a short hallway directly opposite you leads to a set of double doors that have been barricaded over by a set of chains on a padlock and then set in with another bar in front of it. And then another door, which has been partially smashed in the bottom, leaving an opening about large enough for, for a small creature to squeeze through, uh, leads out as well of, of the space. From here, um, the in front of you, though, there are several strange creatures. Many of them are about the size of a halfling or goblin even even smaller than that even most of them at at the highest two feet tall and they are borne aloft on elemental wings as they flutter in front of you a creature it's they have long hooked noses and strange grotesque faces and bodies distorted in different ways for two of them are composed entirely of ice two of mud two of magma and the other two appear to be a cloud of dust in a humanoid form they regard you angrily as you come into into the room and you hear one of the ones of ice say get him and one of the ones of uh mud on the ground say make sure that our the gems are ours as they rush forward to ambush you Roll for initiative. <laughs> oh, little monsters. Mm. <laughs> uh, we got 20. 20 for Veo. Nine. Nine for Sebastian. <laughs> uh, 12. 12 for Paluto. Okay. So, yeah. Mud. Sebastian. Mud. <laughs> nice. Pluto. Yes. Veil. Uh-oh. Okay. So there we go. So we'll have Veo, then the Dust Mephits, the Magma Mephits, Pluto, the Ice Mephits, Sebastian, and finally the Mud Mephits. Oh, we Ve- came here to shop. <laughs> Veo, your first ar- first act, what will you do? Uh, I start by taking uh, my shots. I just react. I was like, what the heck are these things? And I start shooting uh, some arrows towards the ice ones because they look the most solid one- ones out there. I like your reaction. It's different. <laughs> 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 They said kill first. Um, fair, fair. That, that is true. Uh, 18 to hit. That is a hit. Mm-hmm. 22. Oh, my God. The arrow cr- sends a crack going up all of its body, and it is shattered. 
not oh. bloodied. Oh. Um, oh. As the resounding blow goes all through its body and it cracks and crumbles. But it still bears itself aloft. Take my second shot. Oh, critical miss. It sails right past it, deflecting off the ice. I go for the air one. That's why it goes straight <laughs> through it. Uh, oh, no. Um, six. Okay. Um, as uh, as the f- last shot spins by it, it uh, the arrow just sails right past and through one of the, the dust ones in, in the back. That was a warning shot. <laughs> Anything else, Veo? <Faye>? Nope. <laughs> okay. I stay slightly behind. Actually, you know what? I go a little bit around the corner. Okay. A bit worried about their reactions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. One of the dust mephits flutters forward towards the door. Yep. Yep. And as it does so, it kicks up all the dust around it into a windstorm and sends a blast of blinding dust forward. You all need to make a dexterity saving throw. Excuse you? 27. Nice. 14. 14? 18. 18. None of you are blinded, uh, but you will each take uh, three points of uh, slashing damage from the blast. I had dust in my eyes. Yeah, that was rude. Um, and the last <clears throat> dust me fit hovers back back in the room and it flutters over by the alchemy lab and it spins around, c- kicking up all the air and it kicks one of the vials towards Paluto, getting a 13 to hit. Miss. It, it hits hits the shield, <laughs> resounds, and, and <laughs> spills everywhere. Uh, next are the magma mephits. They are the dark red. They're the red ones that have the wings. Uh, they, the two of them together, fly forward and bathe the hallway in a cone of fire. Uh, excuse you. Um, the first one, do, uh, it breathe, but. The first one breathes out its fire breath. The second one, though, as it comes up, it sees you, Paluto Jackson, and it casts heat metal on your no! armor. <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> uh, and so because you are in contact with it, um, Pluto Jackson, uh, you automatically take uh, four points of fire damage. Um, hot, 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 and hot, 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 hot. the other... One flutters up and breathes fire all down the hallway, and all of you can make a dexterity saving throw. Nine. <laughs> what? Yep. I went from rolling seven. a crit seven? to rolling a two. I also rolled a nine. I have a plus two. Okay, seven. so you all fail, and you all take 19 fire damage. Whoa. Oh. And then Ow. the two magma mephits fly back into the respective corners of the room. How close did it, the magma mephit get? They were not within your reach. Gosh, you knew my question. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> ah. Okay. Um, and then we go to Paluto Jackson. Um, my armor is on fire. It's burning. Ow. Yes. Your armor is heating up. It's turning red hot. You're glowing uh, like, like you're going to explode. You're not <laughs> going to, but you are. Um, <laughs> the, the armor is burning all around you. Um, heating you up um, and because you can't drop it or take it off um, you have disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks until your next turn oh goodness gracious okay um ow 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 i say as i run into the room can i go after the magma one or are these dust is dusty in the way Dusty and Icy are both in the way. Dusty is going to get dusted. Uh, 17 to hit. Uh, that is a hit for, for sure. Um, 12 damage. Okay. Remarkably, you managed to connect. There's something solid inside that dust cloud. That and, I, and I poke it. through it. Yeah. I, I find the little gem and it, yeah. 
and then I'm gonna stab it again. Oh, um, I mean, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I'm gonna use precision strike to make it a four fifteen to hit. That is a hit for uh, ten damage. Okay. Um, it is also it is significantly less dusty than it was before. <laughs> oh, come on, <laughs> these things are tough. Okay, and then um, I'm going to try to push it away. <laughs> a little light, bit of light dusting. Uh, you do have disadvantage on this check, although you probably still win. Oh, I have. A, did I have disadvantage on my attack rolls too? Attack rolls and ability checks. I have to reroll all of that. Okay, hold on. You got a 15 and an 18 from before. Yeah. Who? Um, the other, the first one would be a 14, no, 15 now. Okay. Still a hit. And the second one is a, it's the same. Now it's better. Okay. And I had to use precision okay. strike. Okay. Cool. Keeping, <sighs> keeping you honest. Yeah. And now, um, I, yeah, I push it away with a, <laughs> a, a 12. I got a five. Yay. <laughs> so you push it back. Whoosh. So you're pushing it ten feet. I make uh, I do like a flappy breeze with my shield, and I blow it back a bit. Okay, so the ice me fits. Hello, it's uh the one right in front of you that that is wounded uh, heavily, um sees sees you and says freeze right there and uses its frost breath on you. Make a Constitution saving throw. Oh gosh. <clears throat> Uh, and I don't think it'll reach far enough back enough to hit anyone else. Uh, Twenty-two. Alrighty. Uh, so you only take half damage from this, which is going to be six points of cold damage. The right. other rushes forward, and it claws into you with its icy, key, icy icicle claws, Pluto. Ah. Uh, getting a eighteen and an eleven to hit uh, misses. The icicles break off of its of its hands that tries to stab you. They melt as it yep. gets close to my hot hot armor. <laughs> Sebastian, you're up. All right. I um. Sebastian runs up to the door. Mm -hmm. Next to Pluto Jackson, and he's going to cast a hypnotic pattern. So should be able to hit most of them except the magma mm -hmm. meat fits. Okay. So uh, your hypnotic pattern. You yeah, can tell every, me. everybody unless you want to get Paluto in it, though you'll get the you won't get the magma meat fits, but you'll get the mud meat fits, both the dust meat fits, and one of the ice meat fits. Yeah, that's what I will do. Okay. So the magma meat fits. Uh, one of them fails and is hypnotized as the shadowy snakes appear around them. The dust me fits. It's a wisdom saving throw. I get a 15. Does that save? No, it's 16. Okay. And the ice me fits gets four. Yeah. Okay. So all of them except for one of the two mud me fits are hypnotized. Awesome. That's huge. So yeah, yeah. Um, I run in. I grab you by the shoulder. And I'm just like, stand back. And all of these <laughs> snakes explode out of me in these like shadowy coils that wreathe and writhe in the um, in the air. And all of them are dazed and confused. You touch my it. shoulder and you realize it's super hot. Yeah. <laughs> Ow! What's wrong with you, man? I don't know. I'm don't burning know. on the inside. <laughs> oh. I'm just sitting there being like snakes and they, they do, birds but they, and dogs. You didn't menagerie. Get oh, right, because it was the magma. <laughs> yeah. There's so much. Such yeah. a menagerie coming out of you. <laughs> uh, last up are the mud mephits. One of them's hypnotized, but the other um, bounds forward and unleashes its mud breath on Paluto and Sebastian. Excuse mud everyone. Breath. And the two of you mud can make breath. dexterity saving throws no. as it vomits forth a cloud of mud. Oh my gosh. <laughs> 18. 19. You both save and neither of you are restrained in all the mud, but you are very soiled. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I'll get you after Mark. I just clean this clothes. This clothes? These clothes. Ugh. Cool, we go to the top of the round with Vale. I peek back around the corner to see mud-filled <laughs> party members. Hot mud. Warm. It's crusting all over <laughs> you. I'm just like, okay. Um, and I see that the ice ones are... <clears throat> 
patterned, right? One of the ice ones is not, and one of the mud ones is not. Okay. I shoot then my two shots at the non-ice one. The, oh, uh, or the non-hypnotized, the non-hypnotized, the non-hypnotized ice, ice, one. Yeah, yeah. ice one. Yeah. Yeah. Because the other one's yeah. hypnotized. Uh, 14. That is a miss. Ooh. Nope. With the other one. Both um, the shots go wide. And I go, ah! And I start to run back up the stairs. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I go th- um I'll go 15 feet up the stairs. Back up the stairs? Okay. Yeah. Cuz I'm afraid of these breaths. <laughs> this mud breath. Yep. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Vale. <laughs> um I can okay. Still hear you. So next up, we go to the Dust Mephits, both of which are incapacitated. Uh then we go to the Magma Mephits, both of which are active. So one of the Magma Mephits continues to concentrate on heat metal. <gasps> Uh, which deals another 11 points of fire damage uh, to you, uh, Pluto. Oh, oh. Um, and then... I'm bloody. The other Mephit, does its breath weapon recharge? No, it doesn't. Hot, 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 hot. So the one that's concentrating on um, heat metal flies up to the two of you, and it unleashes its fire breath on Pluto and Sebastian. Both of you need to make dexterity saving throws. 19. Uh, 14. You both su- succeed your saving throws, so you only take 7 fire damage, but I will need a concentration check there, Sebastian. Nineteen. You're good to go. And he how then, close is he? He he doesn't flutter, he doesn't fly in range and flies back. And then the other mud mephit um is gonna cast heat metal on your sword. No! <laughs> <laughs> or am I my javelin? Is that the weapon? Yeah, I'm javelin. You have, you have a, oh, you have a javelin out? Yeah. Oh, so you're so he's gonna and your shield's made of wood. Oh. Is it? Or is it made of metal? All of this is uh Okay. Hold on. Uh Sentinel Shield is Hey Sebastian, what are your goggles made of? <laughs> <laughs> His dad made them, so uh, uh, plastic. <laughs> the actual <laughs> goggles are made of plastic. Okay. Uh, there's no more metal for them to heat up. If, if you're not holding your sword, they're not gonna. He's not gonna. My use goggles it. are technically made out of probably some form of metal. Okay. Um, he is going to come up and uh, just magma slash Pluto Jackson. Then appreciate magma slash getting a twenty-two to hit. That'll work. Uh, for ten points of uh. 10 points of damage total. Five of it is bludgeoning and five of it is fire. Alrighty. Next up is Pluto Jackson. I am on fire. I'm covered in mud. Um, I'm pretty, pretty, pretty dead. <laughs> but I, I only know one thing and it's to keep on swinging. And that's what my... Who taught me that? <laughs> Trying to think, who taught me that? Some guy taught me that in passing. He said, "Just keep on swinging." I said, "You too, Daryl." And uh, <laughs> I got a twenty-three to hit. No, I didn't. I got a <laughs> crit miss. <laughs> <laughs> burning. No. Keep swinging, Daryl. Who are you swinging at? I was swinging at the uh, ice, the Icy? ice one right in front of it. Okay. Oh man. Oh, what am I gonna do? Well, <laughs> this is for you, Daryl. Okay. Remember seven. And um, I'm going to precision strike for uh, uh, 18. That is a hit for uh, 11 damage. The blade comes down and shatters the icy creature to pieces and it is destroyed. And then I, uh, oh no, I'm going to do, um, which one, which one is doing the heat metal on me? Uh, the one that's further, further away. away. Oh, so I can't make it to it, can I? No. I'm going to just try to keep up with the other magma one, and I'm going to use second uh, wind. Okay. We go to the ice mephits, one of which is incapacitated, the other which is destroyed. Yep. So we now go to Sebastian. Um, oh, boy. All right, there's a lot of creatures around here, and I'm concentrating on hypnotic patterns, so I don't want to throw out another concentration spell. Uh, 
assessing the situation, look, I take a quick glance around the room. Does it look like this has a lot of alchemical supplies and things that might be of importance? If you want to spend your action to carefully scan the, the room, uh, I can. you can make an investigation check to try to decide. What if I want to just take a very quick gander? Not enough. A quick to... gander is not going to be enough to determine if there's anything of value here. Okay. It looks like it could contain stuff that's not, that that is, but that one cabinet is parts of it are closed, and the other shelves there. Here's who's, who know who's to say. Here's what I do. Sebastian kind of steps in front of Pluto. Hi. And grabs him, realizing how hot he is. <laughs> Uh, oh. And then I'm going to thunderstep. Okay, with all of those little dudes around. So nice, huh? And just like boop, a thunder hop, <laughs> thunder hop. Yeah, okay. I thunder hop across the room, but that kind of explodes out. Alrighty, it shatters the vials on the the cabinet beside you, spilling uh, several c- the contents I- inside them. But there is a mud me fit, a magma me fit. An ice me fit and a dust me fit that are all in that area. Yeah. Yeah. So Woo. one of each. So the ice me fit fails their saving throw. The mud me fit fails. The dust me fit fails. <gasps> Magma me fit also fails. Yeah. Woo. Get him. I'm going to use um, one of my meta magic points to reroll two of those. Okay. Oh, that wasn't much better. 13 damage. 13 damage? Well, the one ice me fit that was incapacitated is now shattered into a million pieces. Yeah. Boom. Um, and all the other ones are damaged for 13 points. That breaks the hypnotic pattern, right? Uh, that breaks the hypnotic pattern on the, uh, the mud me fit and one of the dust me fits, but one of the other two is not. Like the the, the dust me fit and the mud me fit back there by you, Yeah, they're still incapacitated. Good. And the magma me fits... Uh, Loses concentration on heat metal. Ah! 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 Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, it's so hot. <laughs> it's, so, it's so hot. And then I back up. Okay. We now go to the mud mefits, one of which is no longer incapacitated. Uh, and so it turns round. Um, its mud breath does not recharge. <sighs> turns around and... and rushes towards Paluto with its fists. Oh. Getting a 14 and a 21 to hit. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Uh, that will be got, got eight points of bludgeoning damage. Um, I'm going to repost it because... It missed with one attack, yeah. Uh, I want to end it. And I have no more heat metal? Nope. Okay, so a 25 to hit. That is a hit nice. for 13 damage. That leaves it muddied. <laughs> <laughs> You're saving that one. I was waiting for that word. You? <laughs> and we go back to the, to the top of the round with Veo. All right, creep back down the stairs. Okay. Cast Zephyr Strike as my bonus action, and I come into the room. Mm-hmm. Um, and I take a look at the magma me fits and I say, you're toast. And I yeah. shoot, uh, 18. Yep. Okay. That's a hit. Two. Uh, and because I have advantage, I get, oh wait, actually. Oh my God. <laughs> Did I? Yeah. End <laughs> it. It begins. Attack is two d six now. <laughs> when uh, when Bear starts picking up all of her dice. <laughs> Ooh. Oh yeah. Here we go. Um, yeah, you're done, bud. Thirty six damage. <laughs> <laughs> so the magma me fit. There's there's like a blob of magma caught in a bubble on its body, and you pierce it, and it just pops with a large pop and as it does so the magma explodes out oh. all around it Uh-oh. and veo um you need to uh there's a it causes a death burst and uh, fortunately there's no one within five feet of it because otherwise they would be taking damage from the death <sighs> oh i turn Ooh. to the other magma me fit and i magma. say you are also toast <laughs> and i take 
my shots. Uh, 20. It's a hit. Nice. 21 damage. That leaves it magma And I skip back out of the room. <laughs> you guys got this. <laughs> okay. The dust mephits. One is still incapacitated, one is not. And the dust mephit that is not incapacitated, it flutters after Veo, chasing her. Its blinding breath um, does not recharge, so it simply comes right up to her and start and um, says, Stop shooting us! <laughs> Stop hurting us! Um, and it um, slashes at you with its claws. I thought we almost had some dialogue. There. Getting a 19 and a 16 to hit. So we almost Both hit. Back and forth. Okay. Almost. <laughs> then it attacked her again. <laughs> Uh, the two claws slash into you, sorry, it's okay. uh, for a total of 13 slashing damage. Meow. <laughs> uh, and then the magma mephit, one of the two magma mephit, mephit survives, and it turns to Pluto and casts heat metal on him. <laughs> no! I knew that. <laughs> I knew that was coming. Ow, 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 it's hot. Uh, and you take 10 fire damage. That as it giggles and hot, says, hot, 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 Why hot, aren't you uh, melting yet? <laughs> you can see, um, obvious, um, you know, like that heat when you look at like a hot thing and it's like swirl, it's above it, like, yeah, like see, the like, radiation the, of the heat, the air yeah. around me is hot. Pluto Jackson, you're up, sir. I'm fine. If you're looking at my health, I'm fine. I'm totally fine. I'm trying to decide if it's worth anyway. No, it's too <laughs> late. It's too late. <laughs> got to do that. All right. Um, I'm surrounded. Uh, two of the things surrounding you are incapacitated. Oh, for reals? Yeah. Well, then I run past them and I charge the magma thing. One of the things on you is not incapacitated. Oh, I can't see the, that. The, yeah. The, the, this guy, not incapacitated. These two over here are. Um, oh, man. I might not survive one hit. <laughs> Heal yourself. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> Um, I'm going, I'm going to, um, I'll, I'll think of something. Uh, oh, I could die from this, but it's worth it. Uh, I'm going to action surge. Okay. I'm going to dimension door right beside the magma one. And then I'm going to attack it. Okay. Go for it. And, <laughs> uh, I, so you action surge, grab your cloak, dimension door up to it. <laughs> and it, it disappear in a so puff of smoke. Teleports behind you. <laughs> <laughs> and I and I say something along the lines of, surprise! And, oh wait, I'm disadvantaged. Who? <laughs> okay. Uh, 18, 19 to hit. That is a hit. Nice. For uh, 12 damage. Okay. It's a mage slayer. Him. It is magma eed. <laughs> oh yeah, it has to. Yes, you do get to mage slayer it because it has to make a concentration check with disadvantage <sighs> because of its concentrating on heat metal, which it fails. Yo, yes! mage slayer! <laughs> I'm a mage slayer. I I'll be honest. The the reason I'm scared is that if I pop this thing, I feel like it's gonna explode magma <laughs> for me. <laughs> but I don't care because uh, a fifteen. That's a hit for. Eight damage. It is destroyed. Uh oh. <laughs> and as you slash it, a burst of and geyser of magma flies out all over the room in the death burst of the magma mephit. Make a dexterity saving throw. Uh, 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 13. You succeed, but you still take three points of fire damage. And I do, I do, uh, the react, shield master reaction, and I take no damage. <laughs> Nice. Because I'm invincible. So good. Because I am Pluto Jackson, magma fighter. <laughs> <laughs> so hot and burned and scalding. <laughs> good turn. That, that works, wow. right? Good turn. That works. Good turn. Um, You're still alive. I'm just alive. That's <laughs> the important thing. Both the ice mephits are destroyed. Sebastian, be you're alive. Uh, I was almost forgetting this. So, um, Grim the Crow. <laughs> Flies oh, yeah. at the mud me fit right into its face, providing me with the help. Action. I forgot my familiar. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, there I'm, it is. He's he's like on my shoulder and he's like, I can help. And I'm like, oh, right. And I, I send him forward and he flies right into the mud Mephit's face, uh, distracting the mud Mephit. And I'm going to blast it with a um, just a firebolt. Okay. But with Ooh. advantage because of health. And because of elven accuracy. Elven accuracy. <laughs> cool. Um, that's going to be a 19. That hits. That's 17 damage. You blast the mud mephit apart, and it explodes in a shower of mud. And uh, Grim has to make a dexterity saving throw. <laughs> My bird. Twenty two. He is slightly muddied, but not restrained by the death oh, burst oh, of the so mud. Muddy. <laughs> awesome. And he, he like back. he just turns around. He's like, "I got dirt. I, look at this. Like, it's like, what? I got I got all over mud for you. I'll clean you up later." And he flies back onto my shoulder. Cool. Uh, the mud mephit that remains is incapacitated. So we go to the top with Veo. I forgot to do my concentration check last time. Thirteen. Okay. Uh, you're good. Sweet. Um, so I I still have my Zephyr Strike. So I start to move actually back into the room. There's okay. The dust me fit that's on you. Yeah. Yeah. So but she I moves don't get, past oh, right. it. I yeah. moved past it. Amazing. Um, and you go then through I, it. <laughs> I turn back around to it and I shoot it with two arrows. Um, 13. That's a miss. Uh, 21. But that one hits. There it is. 19 damage. You blast it apart and it is destroyed. Nice. Um, I see Nothing where I am. but a pile of dust. Oh. What do you do with the remaining incapacitated ones? We should see if we can get them to work for us. Uh, we just destroyed all their friends. Yeah, that's exactly why they'll... Uh... Maybe they'll answer some questions. <laughs> we always get people to work for us. I want to kill all the people around them. I want to dangle <laughs> one over this cauldron in the middle of the. <laughs> Which one? The dust or the? It is an empty cauldron. Oh. Uh, it's an inactive cauldron, but oh. you could still do it. <laughs> um, <laughs> is I, it you know what? Terrifying. I can Wait. make a fire underneath it with the uh, prestidigitation. And there you go. I minor illusion boiling green liquid. As you hold which mefit over top of it? Uh, which uh, which ones are alive? A, a mud, mud mefit and a dust mefit. Oh, mud. Uh, I don't I know if I can mud. hold dust. Yeah, so <laughs> you could boil. So I'm gonna hold the mud one. You create a fire. <gasps> Wait, I'm what's mud illusion. scared of? Wait, mud scared of water. Bef yeah. Before we touch it, though, just to make sure it stays incapacitated, I come over and I press to digitate the mud off of you. Thank you. Pew. At least one cubic foot. So probably not all the mud. Uh, and I actually come over and I cool or chill a little bit of your armor. Oh, thank you. So that's, I'm like, thank there you. you go. Oh my gosh. Now we can scare the crap out of this thing. All right. I go so, up and I set the fire. Magic is fun. <laughs> yeah. What's mud scared of? I assume, no, fire, because fire would like turn it into stone. Well, I mean, what it's is? a boiling pot. Yeah. Yeah. So that'll work. Yeah, I think that'll work. Fire. Fire. Fire burns. And uh, what color? Sh what color is scariest for a liquid to be? Do you think? Come up with a color that even you've never imagined. I come up with the color from space. <laughs> <laughs> space color, <laughs> like like black. That's scary no, to everyone. That's a, that's a Lovecraft. Oh, okay, reference. sorry. And the other one, should we kill or just? We'll we'll leave it incapacitated. Okay, so I'm gonna I want to like dangle it. Goes, no, no, I've never had a bath in my life, and I don't plan to start now. I feel well, like please don't. Talking. He knows what he's talking. Okay, about. I'll start talking. Apple, bee, <laughs> comb, not random. Dog. Okay, we're gonna ask you some questions. <laughs> oh, questions are hard to answer. I uh, what uh, what do you think you want? What is this room for? This is the alchemical lab of the great man in Marco. Um, why are you here? I don't know. 
Oh, oh, oh. I don't want to see a mud <laughs> thing cry. Like, I, I don't, don't know what this remember. Is. Oh, this is... Who's your master? Man and Marco, and he he summoned me here and said I had to work for him, and I've been here forever, and I just want some gems. Who you work, work for, for now. You work for us now. Yeah, that's where I was going. <laughs> I took the long Are you going to lock me in a room for years and leave me there with no gems? No, we can give you lots of gems. Yeah, we'll give you tons of gems, but what? you have to Do open have this to... locked door in here. I can give him the locked door? You want to go in there? Yep. Well, there's there's really scary things in there. Like what? Well, that's where the accident happened. Uh-oh. What, what accident? Tell us more. I know a lot about accidents. Incident. Well, there was a big boom a long time ago, and the roof caved in, and then all these things happened, and it got really bad, and there there were all these things in there, and, and, and well, Swish, he points to the dust mephit that you killed, Swish said we couldn't go in anymore, so he made us lock the door, and he made me swallow the key. Interesting. I'm going to put you down if you promise not to do anything stupid, like run away or try to hurt us. Are those the only stupid things? Because I've done a lot of stupid things. I feel like you could come up with some more stupid things, but let's keep it. Let's keep the tally low to begin with, and we'll increase the rules. As do you, do you want the key? Yeah. Yeah. Put me down. Okay. He put sits, sits down. And he, goes, and he he takes. Do you have a stick? <laughs> I, can, I like kind of hand him my. No, I don't hand him <laughs> my wand. <laughs> like, what are you I like. Pull, I hold out my wand. Can I? Okay, well, no, I... shove it down my throat. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I just oh, out my stomach. <laughs> All right. Oh, it's coming. Okay. I feel it. All right. <laughs> oh, there we go. Vomits <laughs> all over Sebastian, up chucking the key in the net, uh, covering Sebastian with mud. Why did I even? <laughs> <laughs> hey, we did it. Do you want it? Uh, sure. Cool. You really want to go in this room? Well, at least we have the key for it. That's uh, true. What was your name? Uh, my name is Slurp. Slurp? Uh, I also have this list of ingredients that I'm looking for. Are they here? I can't read. <laughs> I read out the list to him. <laughs> I don't know what those are. All right. There's um, a bunch of stuff in that other room, too. Oh, let's go in there. Uh, what about your other friend, this other dust friend? Is he, is he as... Um, um, trained as you. He's mean. He makes fun of me and says I'm fat. No, oh, you're not fat. <laughs> <laughs> you're just round and globular. Um, maybe he's not fat though. Uh, round is a shape, so you're staying in shape. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I like that. Just remember. Well, that. what um should because we don't want to have to hurt him, but we will. Actually, we kind of want to hurt him. Can you give us a reason not to? No. Okay. <laughs> let's, let's. I mean, we were summoned here together. He was kind of a, he was kind of a jerk to me. Those those dust air mephits, they just think they're so high and mighty, all over us are earthy types. You know, I prefer someone a little more down to earth. But you know, you killed them, so. Um, wow, that's heavy. <laughs> so uh, it's the earth. <laughs> I'm gonna carry that. Um, what's his name? Slurp. Slurp. Slurp, I'll carry that for the rest of my life. Just know that. But I'm gonna kill this ma- this thing over here, and yeah. you're going to be that 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 was a good me fit there. His name was Sucker. Yeah. Oh. What the other mud one? Slurp. He is a bit of a sucker, isn't he? Sucker. <laughs> yeah, he was. I used to steal gems from him. Don't tell him. <laughs> well, he's dead. So uh, yeah. I would tell him, but I mean, yeah, it's kind of gone. Um, Slurp, you get the honor of serving us for the rest of your life. Do you accept the honor? I mean, I've lived a long time. How long are you going to live? Probably not not as long. I accept. Yes. Um, Slurp, thank you. Um, let's kill this other one. <laughs> oh, okay. Slurp, you have. this is how you prove your worthiness. <laughs> we throw like a pointed <laughs> stick down and we're like... He oh. goes over to the cabinet and gets out a dustpan and sweeps oh. it. <laughs> Solid. Slurp, you, you're already improving yourself. So useful. He's going to get, he should get like 
promoted or something. Yeah, he's definitely going to be uh, head, head slurp. sweep. Head, head slurp. <laughs> you are now head slurp. Of Dragon <laughs> I don't know what that means, but it sounds nice. Yeah, it is. That's um, the point. We'll bring you back to our tower. I'm going to start <laughs> looking around the room for anything that's on my shopping list. Um, yeah, you managed to find a few of the things that are on the shopping list in here. Uh, search, searching around, you're able to find uh, some bits of snake skin, some eye of newt, uh, some leg of frog, you know, a few of those things uh, in, in there as well. Um, the um, Also, uh, going around through the, the things in here, you managed to find um, a couple intact potions that survived the explosion. What kind of potions? What are they? Um, you can identify them during a short rest. Do you want to take a short rest? Yeah, sure. We I think Pluto it. needs it a little bit. Uh, I, no, why? Because I'm in less than double digits in health? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why? Wait, guys. <laughs> I'm going to try reason. out a new thing that I discovered. It probably isn't necessary right now, but I want to try it out anyway. What is it? Are we taking a short rest? Yeah. All right. I open up my mom's spell book to a page that has a picture of a little hut and I start trying. It takes me about 10 minutes, but I managed to create a tiny hut. Cool. In the middle of the room. Oh, I'm like, we'll a be magical sphere that protects you. Yeah. Um, during this time, you are able to identify the potions. Uh, one is a potion of invulnerability. One is a potion of heroism and one is a potion of invisibility. Okay, who wants what? We each get one. Heroism. Well, I'm already heroic and invulnerable, so I don't <laughs> I think, know if... Uh... I think you should get heroism or invulnerability. <laughs> what were the... Invisibility. Heroism and invulnerability. Yeah, because I think Veo would do really good with invisibility. Yeah. Take invisibility. It could be gross oh. how many advantage attacks you get. <laughs> what do you want? Uh, what's heroism do? Uh, the potion of heroism. Um, the potion of heroism, after you drink it, um, it uh, has the following effects. For one hour after drinking it, uh, when you drink it, you gain 10 temporary hit points, and then you are also under the effects of a blessed spell. That could be hilarious. I think mm. that one is good for you. That's right up my alley. And I'm already heroic, so that's like okay. double heroism. I'll take invulnerability, which just means I take half damage on a bunch of stuff. Well, that's great. Or should I take? Or what do you think is better for? I think you'll what? make better use of the bless. Yeah, spell like me that, or Veo sure. could take the bless, but I think uh, I think invisibility would be really invisibility good. Invisibility is me. hilarious. Yeah, you take heroism. I'll take invulnerability. You because invisibility, invisibility doesn't mean you're quiet. So I mean, even if you weren't visible. <laughs> You'd be clunking around. They can hear me, but they can't see it coming. <laughs> ah! Um, and we're taking a short rest, correct? Yeah. Cool. Okay. I'm gonna take some hit dice. I'm gonna take like thirty hit dice. I'm gonna take. You know what? And so we're just chilling in this hut. Yeah, it's um, it's a nice little hut. Okay. Um, I don't know. It's, it's a little little cabin in the woods. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, I healed some. Actually, you know what? I'm going to take some more. Ooh. We definitely didn't need this little magical hut, but I'm glad we have it, guys. This hut is so fun. We just need, think like, of the possibilities. More, so much decor. So is the hut just like a clear I know it's a it's, semi it's translucent from the inside but opaque and whatever color you want it to be from the outside. <gasps> yellow. Yellow. Purple. Okay. It's my hut. Can we put like yellow on the edges? Like around the door. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty, which way will you go next? Let's go see the stuff. Yeah, so there's a hole in that one door, yep. and then there's a locked door. Yep. Slurp. The holy door. You go through the holy door, right? Have you been through the holy door, Slurp? Oh yeah, there's a bunch of cool stuff in there. That's where all the storeroom was, and where Matty Marco used to make all of his stuff. But then the actual garden 
was through the locked door. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let's grab some stuff first and let's yeah. save that locked door. Put it in your so bag we have of the holding. Key. Yeah. yeah. We don't need the we don't have to worry too much. We can always go in later. Yeah. Let's go scrounge up some materials. Slurp, lead the way. All right, he waddles through, leaving a trail of mud behind him. <laughs> uh, and you're going through which door again? Uh, the holy door, I believe, first. The holy door. <laughs> <laughs> the door. Beyond is a large extended workshop. Um, and what you can see here are the footprints, of uh, muddy footprints, burn marks and scorch marks all in the tables. And it looks looks like basically this workshop room is like a bottling plant where there's several tables that are laid out with vats, small vats, enough that the cauldron could be emptied in them, and then a tap on them and potion bottles. And Slurp says, Man and Marco used to make a big batch of potions, and we'd have to sit here and fill them all up. (laughs) Where would you put them after? We'd put them into the storerooms over there, or you'd sell them off, and then, or that that storeroom on, on the left there, that had all the finished ones, and that's got all the ingredients and all of man and marco's treasure and uh slurp where did manny marco keep the uh, the recipes well he would have kept the rest his he had a lot of his own recipes and his, his books and stuff upstairs okay uh-huh. oh upstairs doesn't look too well these days are any of these he rooms... might have a few with his treasures i don't know are they traps are there traps in these door can you just go in and out as you see well, the doors used to have traps on them, but that was back when there were 12 of us. <laughs> Wait, that makes what? sense. Where do the other ones go? <laughs> <laughs> he points to like a mud slick on the ground by one of the doors I'm and a chart bar. I was like, did we kill 12? <laughs> yeah, you start counting. How many did I'm we like, we didn't, we yeah, didn't kill we, all we, of them. <laughs> we got bored here after a couple of years and wanted to try to get his treasure, get some of the gems that he had in there. But then we blew up. By touching the door? Yeah. Is it safe now? Do you want to try to mage hand it? I don't know. No one's tried since. We didn't want to blow up. Let's let's flip over one of these tables, mage hand together, and see if we can open up one of these doors. As you go to flip the table, I first stop you, and I'm like, is there anything good on this table? It, the Whatever was in this vat, um, examining it and seeing like the, the liquid inside... Um, what you realize, make an account, uh, um, an investigation, in, in arcana check. Oh, arcana. Twenty-two. The liquid in these barrels, and looking at the ingredients that you saw in the other room, and the cauldron, and all the other barrels in here. Manny Marco was making counterfeit healing potions. Ah. Oh, like they're not even. They don't even. They they register as magical, but they're not. They don't work. <laughs> this isn't how you make a healing potion. I just learned this. <laughs> wow. I just it's finished already, reading. <laughs> so, so like, uh, essentially, um, you, you know, in the process of making a healing potion, there's a point where the liquid is charged with magic. And so a layman would notice that it was magical, but it hasn't been. But that's just like the solution that you would use as the basis for any other potion. And the ingredients that he has in here are basically that catalyst that you would use for a potion with grape flavoring. Mm. He's pulling the wool. Are one's there... grape, one's cherry, and one's orange. Are and there... I verified this by trying. They're delicious. All of them. I take fizzy some. and rather carbonated. Mm. I take some, and I'm just like I, I like write on them not healing potions. But the, these, well, they taste great. That probably is the central innovation here, but they're not healing potions. But they wouldn't do anything good for like. This in fact, the, they're they're of dubious health value as well. Yeah. Okay. Great. Sustenance. I'm gonna offer these to somebody at some point. <clears throat> I'm gonna write that down. And um, these were just kind of chilling on. How the many table. were there? Um the the bar- the barrels themselves. There's there's probably enough to make several of these fake potions. Yeah. yeah. And are there bottles around where we can yeah. bottle a few? Yeah. How many do we bottle? How Slurp. many do you want to bottle? Slurp, uh, while we're going to figure out the door, he has to like, get to work bottling. Like four, four <laughs> of each flavor? No, I hated bottling. <laughs> the worst it. part was having to clean them up afterwards because he gets mud all over the bottles. <laughs> I think we're fine with just three. Three of, oh, one of each flavor? Yeah. Oh, okay. 
Unless you wanted to make more. But I want to open this door. I want to set up like a booth and be like, 50 cents. Lemonade. We're not selling fake healing Aww. potions, fam. We're gonna we're gonna bring <laughs> Drakenheim out of debt <laughs> with fake healing potions. No, it's just not... delicious drinks. We won't. Yeah, I'm we won't do it. Healing as, potions, just shiny, shiny healing. delicious drinks shiny that do delicious nothing drink. but you, taste delicious. Can you help me with this table so we can open this? <laughs> yeah, I help you with the table and like put it over. Infinite treasures or fizzy drinks. Uh, thirty feet. Thirty feet. Okay, thirty feet. Back it up. Back it up. I'm still. Uh-oh. Hold my shield up. Uh, Ready for an explosion. Slurp hide. Mage hand. You open the door with the mage hand and it it pulls open. Um, Because you you actually realize that the door is locked, but you can use Slurp's key to try to open it. And turning the key, it opens the door. But as the door turns with the mage hand, there's like a bolt of lightning that shoots out through the key. The door opens... But had you been the one to turn that key, it would not have been a pretty sight. Ooh. Mage hand. Good job. Good job. Magic. And I press the change state. <laughs> Spark. Stop showing off. Yeah. Yes. It's because it's my new. job. <laughs> you did all this a long time ago. This is She's new to this. The you room beyond this is filled with several large trunks. Um, the collection of Nanny Marco's investments over the years um many of the the trunks in here are not locked uh, but you can break the locks off them for the few that actually are um and inside the various uh crates in and other things within um are several are are a total in silver trade bars about a thousand gold pieces worth of silver trade bars. And then another 250 gold pieces in coin. So, like... 400 each with 50 left over? Something like that. I took the extra last time, so whoever mm-hmm. wants the extra this time. So 400 each. Yeah. In another container um, are several... Take the extra, Pluto. Um, you take it. Oh, uh, thanks. Um, in another thanks, friends. Case, um, there is a jewelry box made from the shell of a turtle, and inside it are several pearls. There are in total five pearls, each worth about a hundred gold pieces as well. Oh my gosh! Are we rich? <laughs> Uh, this time, we're gonna have, yeah. this time, I'll take one pearl. You take two. Each. Two. Oh, okay. Two, two, one. So they're worth how much each? A hundred each. hundred each? Are we going to sell them or let's sell them? Yeah, you would need to sell them. Okay. Yeah. I'll make note of them then. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I'll make note of them on, because I have a couple things that we need to sell as well. So five yep. pearls, right? And then beside the, the turtle shell box... Mm-hmm. Uh, the turtle shell case, there is another wooden box that is tied up with a bit of line as well. It The box itself is quite small. It's about um, maybe about f- uh, five inches wide, two inches tall, and f- five, four inches wi- long, essentially. It's got twine around it? Yeah, tied up Take to close it. my fingernail and I just... Open the twine. Uh, inside is a deck of cards. Yeah, I'm proficient in playing cards. Just a deck? Do I sense anything different about these cards when I pick them up? Uh, when you pick the cards up um, and look through them, um, they, they aren't playing cards. All of them have several parchment cards uh, of which there are... Um, in total, um, there are 29 cards. They almost look like collectible cards because looking at them, there are different creatures depicted on each one. Hmm. One of the cards has the picture of a cloud giant, another of a red dragon, another of a goblin, another of a an, uh, an ogre, another of a knoll, another of a kobold and of other fantastic creatures. Like, they're almost like collectible cards. Hmm. 
But nothing other than that special no. about them? No. They are magical, though. Oh. They're magical? They're magical. Detect the magic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because when you turn them over, the creature on the card moves. <gasps> like the card is animated. Hmm. Just going to keep those? Yeah, take those. Magic cards. Anything else in here that we find? But um, ooh, I could make a game out of this. And yeah, I mean, but we don't have decks to play with. That's the only problem. Can we share? No. Okay. Well, then it's gonna be a lonely, lonely game. Um, anything else in the room when we're rummaging through? That's all. Okay. Um. Do I find any more of the supplies I'm looking this for? This is a treasure room. Uh, but there's another room. Yeah. The other room is filled with more supplies and stores. Um, more of a, of a rote nature. Most of it containing boxes and boxes of empty glass vials. And another s- crates of these finished fake potions. <laughs> there's about 300 of these fake potions. I still think we can make this into a business. <laughs> I start piling them into the bag of holding. Yeah, yeah. we're going to have yeah. so many. I was going to say, we could totally like go to the thieves and as they're like watching their their rounds, sell these drinks. How many How many do I... Can I no. As long as you want to keep looting them. Okay. Here's All 300. The, I just came up with an idea. What if we put they're something in, like, in them? They're in like wooden crates to keep the bottles from breaking. Oh, great. What if we put, like, lace them with something, Mr. Potion Man, and we could put people to sleep or something with them or I'll make them sick? It. Could and we? Then, so we could give them as, like, a gift, and then when they're all, like, sick, we just go in and, like, do our thing. It's usually murder. I'm going to take 10 of each flavor. That's great. <laughs> so 30? Yes, I have 30 potions. Okay. Okay. I have 30, 30, so- uh, 30 um, flavored ones. drinks. Yeah, like w- what you can surmise, Sebastian is it, it, uh, Sebastian is that because he wasn't actually putting any real like magic of value into these things, he could mass produce them and sell them to somebody that just didn't know any better. Oh, yeah, let's you can see that to, that uh, the the key ingredient Jupiter. seems to be snake oil. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yeah, let's definitely give them to Jupiter, <laughs> but then he'll market it and make a fortune. You know it. No, we'll just sell them like a few. Tell them or we use them as gifts. We can use them as cheap gifts. <laughs> <laughs> yes. For the commander for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, we got all our Christmas presents Just, just imagine selling a fake healing potion to someone and then they try to use it in a desperate situation. <laughs> oh, oh, how great. Think of the ethical implications. <laughs> I'm just going to market them as great tasting drinks. No healing whatsoever. Yeah. Just yummy soda like <laughs> yums. Are we calling them soda yums? <laughs> yes. Uh, soda yums. So we, we spend a bit of time kind of rummaging through the room and I'm obviously still looking for any of the alchemical supplies that we came here for. Mm-hmm. I do obviously stop to take a lot of these yeah. y- uh, soda yums. Soda yums. <laughs> um... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I am nervous door. but I think we need to look into like this last door was that what he said was the uh, the garden yeah yeah and he said that there was some bad stuff in there and yeah. that's where we should go through the well oh I think well maybe no no <laughs> slurp I say because there's a door in this room that leads into the garden yeah. correct yeah I mean, we don't have to go through the big two chain no. door. Slurp, why is there two doors? It's just the extra way in. And why didn't you lock this door? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I mean, you know what? Loaded question. Uh, moving on. Slurp. Well, we live in that room. <laughs> so it's more like obvious. Well, that door is much smaller. And the thing can't get in in through the smaller door. What's the thing? We just called it the thing. Mm. It was, it was kind of like all the plants in there came to life, and they tried to eat us. I mean, we've seen that before. Yeah, we've dealt with that. Yeah. I've dealt with that. The garden. I didn't do well. <laughs> no. I didn't. You guys want to go? Into She's the really angry. Plant eating room. She. It's a yeah. She. Can I ask what's where does the well lead? The I, well. I don't know why I'm obsessed with the well. Have you ever been outside? What's outside? Oh God. 
<laughs> oh my oh slurp oh slurp we're gonna show you a new world you're gonna live on a tower does it involve a sky <laughs> yeah i hate skies <laughs> yeah you're gonna you love can, it down you here, can though. live on you the ground floor though <laughs> <I'm slurp. laughs> um so this door is unlocked i go up to it and i kind of jiggle the handle yeah oh okay as you jiggle the handle, you hear a voice from behind that goes, Feed me! Oh, gosh. <laughs> uh, guys, I have a plan. Was that her? You open the yeah, door. Yeah, that's I, her. I throw in a sodium. <laughs> what does she usually eat? Oh, sometimes she goes out and she she sends out. She's she, 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 you know, she finds a way. I don't know. We don't go in there very often anymore, but she does. What if we um? What if we storm both doors? Like Veo, if you went in the side door mm-hmm. and I go through the front door, so I make kind of like a distraction, and I stay out here, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I could even you could be invisible because of a certain potion. I think I'll save that one. I could be heroic. <laughs> um, for all we know, it's like a flower in there, and flowers have never caused us very many problems. Like I've never had well. trouble with a flower in a garden ever. <laughs> Picking flowers was the easiest assignment we've ever been on. <laughs> you guys were hypnotized by the flowers. <laughs> I don't remember it yeah, going. But it like all worked that. out in the end. I don't remember it going down like things way. all work out in the end. Um, all right. What do you so guys if think? I take the key and I go through the front door, yeah. Bayo, you go through the side door, so you can get maybe an ambush surprise sort of attack. Sebastian, do you want to come with me or him? Oh, d- now now I have to pick favorites. <laughs> so me. <laughs> I'm going to go with Pluto. Okay, yeah, right. split up the magic a little bit. Oh, uh, true. Yeah. <laughs> also, Too much magic you're good at sparks. range. I'm good at range. I like to put Pluto in front of me. Yes. I'll yeah. stand there. I can always it. run away if uh, I'm not. I'm Run back. I, crawl I don't run away. away. I run back. <laughs> Usually in combat, I just keep crawling and it keeps working. That's true. Um, All right. Can I, okay. So How are we going to know when to open the doors together? Um, How about your crow stays with me? Okay. And then can you talk to him at all or no? I can telepathically communicate okay. with it. So He will cough three times when it's time to open the doors okay. together. Set yourselves up. Good plan. Oh, uh, then I also am going to battle ready something. Uh, I'm going to reach into the bag of tricks. Oh. And pull out. Not the bear. The first of many um things huh. a jackal a ja- <laughs> it's jackal it's, it's a jackal, jackal. <laughs> it's a jackal how many should i have should i just create an army yep another jackal <laughs> two jackals <laughs> two jackals how many do you get there's 3 a day two jackals and a baboon <laughs> 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 Do you want to go the other door? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Gosh, I have a baboon. <laughs> I only get a crow. It's a jackal. It's a jackal. <laughs> and for obvious reasons, the baboon is kind of in charge of the two jackals. Okay. <laughs> like he's kind of running the show. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, do, you should do, add those stats. Do we technically that. own a circus? Yeah. Are we? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, everyone. We have a circus now. For a second, I was like, "What is a jackal exactly?" I see it now. I know what it is. Monty Martin's Flying Dungeon Circus. How do you? How do you quickly add? Menagerie. <laughs> It's the word of the day. <laughs> okay. So I will have you all uh, roll for initiative. Oh. Uh, 14. Wah, wah. Okay. okay. Veo's got 14. Four. Okay. Sebastian's got four. Crit. Crit happens. 17. Okay. So, you will open the doors. 
On the count yeah. of three. And the you're, of three. I'm not tracking initiative separately for your summon creatures. You guys can just do it as you want to. So, Sebastian, you're going to be last. Mm-hmm. Then we're going to have the veggies. <laughs> then Veo and Paluto. Ooh. And then as you kick open the doors, our friend will be the first to go. So this is what you see. Oh, wait, you know what? Can I mage hand the door open? Try that trick a lot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Oh. Okay. You open the door into a large, overgrown, algae-filled pool. It looks like for many, for a long time, underneath underground here was some sort of underground growing space that with this underground greenhouse it feels humid in the air like water has been collecting and all sorts of subterranean flora and fauna are growing in this watery algae filled brackish pool in the center and it smells like fungus in the room and what you can see in this room growing out of the center is this massive conglomeration of vines and fungus that comes up in into this long neck and ends in a giant mouth <laughs> and surrounding it are small plants that are picking the fungus and pi- and taking them out into a hole in the room and these are various plants, some of the alchemical plants that you've been sent here to retrieve that are ambulatory and carrying little spears and gardening tools as they are, and there's all gardening tools in niches all along, along the room here as they're harvesting the plants in here and bringing them out into this hole that's been broken into the wall that leads into a rough uh, set of burrows, tunnels. And as you... Uh, Turn, turn around, the just the mouth-like creature looks at you and this weird plant-like tongue comes out of the mouth and it says, Mmm, dinner time! What will you do? <laughs> Is that Audrey? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Um, just so that we know for time, we might go a little bit over. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Alrighty, so um, Audrey catches sight of all of you um, and um, seeing all of this, um, seeing you open the door, um, her long vine-like tongue extends out and it splits up into several different sections as it does so, roping around the rooms to reach out to you all like tendrils. Um, and it makes an attack against each of you. Getting uh, a 24 against Paluto, oh, a 13 gosh. against Sebastian, and a 17 against Veo. Yep. I cast shield. Okay. It gets me. Um, you, All of you that have been hit are grappled and restrained, and you have disadvantage on strength checks and saving throws. Wow. And then the tongue recoils backwards, pulling you along uh, 25 feet into the room. Get them, jackals. (laughs) Get them. Oh, and one of the jackals gets tendrilled as well. Uh, I hit one of the jackals, too. Bye, jackal. This this isn't good. Uh, and then, uh, and then Pluto, as you were pulled up to her, she lunges forward to bite you. <laughs> Excuse you. <laughs> Getting a twenty to hit. That hits. Alrighty. And that will hit for twenty piercing damage. Oh gosh. <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Concerning. 
<laughs> you're you're sitting there stroking yeah, your beard. <laughs> I block like the, the tendrils coming at me, and I'm like, Shh, and like stop, and I'm just like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> As your friends are screaming, yeah. getting pulled and <laughs> flailed around the room, and I'm just sitting there stroking my non existent beard. Paluto, mm. it's your turn. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, let's roll with it. Let's see what we can do. Okay. So I'm grappled and restrained. I have disadvantage on strength checks. My move is zero, right? Do I get disadvantage on attack rolls against it? Yes, because you're restrained. Hmm, she's interesting. She's a wily creature. <laughs> a hundred. Um. Oh. <laughs> Help, jackals. <laughs> Help, j- the jackals, they did nothing. <laughs> um, uh, I guess I'm going to just try to stab it with my, um, with okay. my uh, javelin here. And, uh, oh, that's not great. Oh, that's even worse. Uh, a t- 11. Um, as you go to stab her, the vines that make up her body are like iron. Oh, no. Um, okay, I'm just gonna sw- do it again. Swing again. Swinging for the. Uh, yeah. I crit miss. Okay. <laughs> and then on my bonus action, get him, jackal baboon. <laughs> and so the baboon comes in riding the jackal. <laughs> and oh, by the way. <laughs> and he's gonna it's gonna go for um the vines holding me. Can I get it to attack the vines? Yes, yeah. I do that. Jackal and baboon start to grab at the vines and try to free me. Okay, go for it. Um Oh, yeah. So the baboon gets like a... <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> a 19 to hit? That hits. <laughs> for for uh, uh, three three damage? So it grabs... No, one ten- damage. It tries to pull the tendril apart, but it can't. It's just not strong enough. <laughs> and, uh, and, the, and the hyena also... Oh, and they get advantage because they all have pack tactics for some reason. <laughs> Oh, and just to see if the other guy hits. No, it wasn't a. So, uh, and then a five to hit. No, no. So the the jackal's trying to bite it, and the baboon's trying to free it. Help me, help me, creatures of the bag. Help me, my forest friends. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, a giant weird thing grabbed me. And that's my turn. As Bam, I panic. It is your turn. Your the the tendrils are pulling you close. You are restrained. What will you do? I'm going to try to get out of this because that's what I try to do every time. Okay. But I have disadvantage, correct? Uh, yes. You, 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 um, you're you in a grapple. Yep. So you can use acrobatics or athletics to escape. Oh, acrobatics. Yes. Okay. But disadvantage, you said. Uh, you only have disadvantage if you're using strength. Oh, nope. Using acrobatics. All right. Okay. 15. That is enough. You managed to slip out of uh, Audrey's... Uh, uh, t- tongue-like tendrils. Yes. You are free. And I use my feline I agility that. <laughs> that dimension uh, that. <laughs> to move. How many feet away can I get? <laughs> I'm going to go all the way around the corner. <laughs> Bye, Vea. <laughs> be like, I'll be back. Um, and you know what? Actually, how many feet? Can I make it around to the other room? <laughs> Behind how you. How far can you go? 80 feet. <laughs> 80. Yeah. And if you do a cunning action dash, is that with cunning action dash? Oh, I could do dash as my bonus action. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So you're going to go all the way around to Sebastian? To behind Sebastian. Actually, a bit further out. A bit further back. Okay. Actually, even further back. <laughs> behind the corner. Because I don't want to hit any of those tentacles again. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I uh you just vanished and I'm like, where did Vale oh oh it's like oh. this is an even magic. I'm this still is just me. Like, hmm. <laughs> the veggies. Uh the veggies leap into the air and they all swarm the jackals and the baboon. <laughs> <laughs> so two of them go to attack them. Uh two two basically on everybody in the room. So the veggie pygmies, uh the, oh, they no. get um two against the first jackal, 
getting a nine and a ten. Both <laughs> miss. They're veggie pygmies. Go yeah. jackals. That's so one great. get the next one against the next jackal gets a fourteen and a fifteen. Those are both hits. Dealing it has three hit points. Uh, yeah, it the two of them together deal ten points of damage. Oh, so so they stab the jackal to, get <laughs> to death, and then they start dragging its corpse back towards Audrey, <laughs> and then the baboon gets stabbed for a fourteen and a nine. Oh yeah, fourteen hits for eight damage. That's it has three hit points. <laughs> the, the, the oh, it's not. Are killed. oh no, my it's forest dead. friends. <laughs> No, my forest friends. And then uh, Pluto to attack you with advantage. Uh, one getting 23 and the other getting 16. Okay, 23 hits. For seven points of damage as it stabs you. And then the other Vegapygmies start picking up the corpses of your forest friends and bringing them towards Audrey. <sighs> So where are all the veggie? Are they like actually dragging? Oh my the god! They're, 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 well, oh they just killed gosh. them, so they've used all their actions. Okay. But they're <laughs> you just see all these animals get slaughtered. I'm so sorry, my forest friends, my forest people. <laughs> Sebastian, it's your turn. Um, I'm still looking into the room, seeing these veggie pygmies like piling up on Pluto, and I'm trying to like I'm I'm trying to time it right. Um, <laughs> just go with your. I'm gonna try to cut. Don't worry about me. Through and around Pluto with a wall of fire. So I I'm like okay. lining it up in the room and I and I start raising my hand up and out of the ground these fires start to shoot. And this is this is what it's gonna do. I, I'm so much fire. I'm gonna go. <laughs> Does your armor start to heat up again because you're so close? To I get to choose which direction is hottest, and like the other side of it is. Oh yeah! So you're gonna do a circle around, <gasps> and if you can cut the tendrils with fire, yeah, yeah, this it, could be huge. Yep. Am I protected? Oh, you're in an <laughs> inferno. <laughs> Is this safety? <laughs> is, is this safety? I'm like, don't worry, Pluto, I got you covered. And I like rise this ring of fire around you that just burns all of the veggie pygmies that are yes. surrounding you. And that is the coolest Audrey. thing I have okay, ever seen. Okay, do I make saving throws now for them or is that at the start of their turn? Um, wall of fire. When the wall appears, each creature within its area must make a dexterity saving throw. Okay, on a failed so save I'm going to roll for all the, the veggie pygmies. Oh my! Uh, so, wow! You might not just, a single veggie pygmy makes it no. save. You just <laughs> saved yeah, go for it. Pluto Jackson. And uh, what about Audrey? And Audrey, she gets a natural twenty. Ooh, okay. So she saves, so she'll she'll take half damage from that. What about her tendrils? Whoa. Do they do? Uh, I'm gonna say the tendrils are destroyed. Oh, That's nice! Good. Yeah. Oh my! That's a lot. 26. 34 damage. All the veggie pygmies are <laughs> annihilated. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Audrey is lightly roasted. Woo! Fortunately, you do need to burn some of the uh, the plant matter that you're going to be harvesting, so this might not be too disastrous what you've done to the garden. Mm. Roasted veggies <laughs> I tried for to dinner. keep it contained. Yeah. Oh yeah, my. it might impair the supply go that you have, but you'll be able to get some going forward. Oh, good. Okay, because it, it is water, right? As well, that the fungus is growing out of, mm -hmm. so the fire won't spread through yeah. there. Yeah, that's kind of yeah. I want to keep it contained. Okay, just murder the things that are murdering my friend. Okay. <laughs> um. So, uh, with that, we go to the top of the round with Audrey, who is shocked and appalled at what has just happened. <laughs> <laughs> um and she kind of shambles backward um and she fires like tendrils out into the fire but does but is like no oh i wanted my where's my dinner i don't want any roasted meat i want it raw um and the tendrils fire towards it but it's blocking both the doorway and um and Pluto, so she can't effectively attack with the tendrils. Like, she sends them through, but they get burned up by the fire immediately. I don't know what you're going to do on your turn. That was so cool. Pluto, it is your you. turn. What are you going to do? That was the coolest thing. Um, the firewall is on the water, right? Yeah. I dive under the water, 
and I huck my javelin at Audrey. Does this will it? Yeah, will it blend? <laughs> um, the water is only like a foot deep, but it's enough that you could get under the wall of fire. And uh, and I'm gonna use um my javelin of lightning, and I'm gonna hit her with a. Is there room attack. for you to stand out of the? You, you're gonna use the lightning on the javelin of lightning. Okay, so I'm gonna dunk, duck under the. The firewall. Yeah, you're gonna have to come out on the other. And side. I'm gonna do one of those cool like my action head. hero. My, yeah, and the water flies up, and I just huck my cool. javelin at. I'm her. gonna sing you for three points of fire damage. I accept the singeing, but I'm pretty Sorry. on fire already. Singed whiskers. Um, and then uh, yeah, and in future runs because the heat is radiating outward. In, you will take damage from the radiation of the heat in future rounds. If I stay, if, if you, you stay, stay within, within twenty 10, feet, twenty feet. I think it's twenty or ten. Uh, within ten feet of that side. Okay. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna come out and hit, throw the javelin, and then just keep running at her. Okay. So um, twenty-two to hit. That's a hit. Nice. Um, she's gonna take. <laughs> Oh, that wasn't good. That wasn't good. Uh, that was pretty weak. 11 lightning damage. <laughs> oh, and she has to make a... No, she just takes that plus... Um, 11. So 22 damage. 11 of it lightning, 11 of Alrighty. it javelin. And then I'm going to go get my javelin. Okay. And I'm going to keep going at her. Nice. And then I'm going to pull the javelin out and stab her with it. Um, ooh, precision strike. Uh, getting a seventeen. It bounces off. Of She's her, so her, strong. Yeah. yeah. Um, like it comes out as the sword comes down. A small vine comes up from her side and just whips it out of the <sighs> way. And then, uh, my bonus action, I'm gonna try to push her down underwater. Okay. Because I'm super strong. Not being right. her prone. Yeah. For a, tw- she's got to be the twenty-four. You send her sprawling, and she's knocked prone. There, Vale, you're up. You said she's 10 down. Feet. 10 feet? Yeah. Um, yeah. can I shoot through the wall of fire or no? You cannot see through it to shoot. Okay. Right. Um, and because you don't have magical arrows, any arrows that pass through it would be damaged by it and destroyed. I actually have two magical arrows, but if I can't see through it... Then I might no not have helped by knocking her prone. <laughs> uh, that's okay. Um, what I want to do... Can I get around the wall of flame? There should be enough space there. Okay. Um, I mean, yeah, as long as you don't end your turn within 10 feet of it. Is that Yeah, that's the deal, right? I'll, I'll dash as a bonus action using my cunning action to okay. get... Out and around to the corner, and I want to ready an action so that way, if Audrey, Audrey, right, um, gets up, um, that I take a shot at her. Okay, cool. So it'll be just one shot, though. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Um, next up is the veg- the veggies who are all destroyed. Sebastian, you're up. I'm gonna stop concentrating on this wall of fire. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> that it's- was. It served Clutch. its purpose. Yes. So good. So much fire. Now what are you going to do? And I am going to... Oh, boy. Um, I'm just going to send my Smoke crow. and steam rises as several of the uh, several of the plants have been destroyed in here, but much of it still survives. Many do survive. They've been burned, but the, the wall of fire wasn't in place long enough to like totally destroy the garden. My crow flies in and starts pecking at the knockdown uh, body okay. of Audrey. To help you? To help me, uh, which negates my disadvantage that I would have. Yep. So I'm going to just firebolt Audrey. Sure. Do, do, do. Uh, 27. That's a hit. I'm going to use Empowered Spell because both of those were very low. There we go. Nice. Uh, 14 damage. Nice. That leaves Audrey 
chlorophyll? Bloody? <laughs> <laughs> I love your exploration of all the different terms She's for bloody. She's leaking. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, She's oozing like an aloe plant. With that, we go to the top of the round with Audrey, who gets up from prone. Yes, Hi. a shooter. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 15? As she gets up, you fire the shot. She bats it out of the way with one of her tendrils and sends the tendrils all out, all uh, around to all of you no! once again, no. uh, getting a 24 versus Sebastian, a... 14 versus Veo, no. and a 22 versus Paluto. Um, do I also get, do I get a Sentinel because she's attacking someone? Yes, because this is technically a melee attack. Yep. Uh, well, I get, I'll do it after. Okay. And then... And then hit me. Yep. And then it also, she doesn't reel in um, uh, Grim, who manages to... But <gasps> Sebastian, you get reeled in. She didn't get me. She didn't get you. Oh, I'm being pulled towards it. Oh my god! It's and really as huge. she, <laughs> as you, as you get pulled towards it, she bites down on you, Sebastian. No! Getting an 18 to hit. Ow! And that is going to be. Why does it have teeth? It has very sharp ones at that. Uh, that is going to be a grand total of 22 points of piercing damage for me. Yeah. And both you and Pluto are restrained and grappled. And would my reaction go off before or after the restraint? Before. Yeah. Yes. Stabby, stabby. Uh, oh, my God. Um, huh. Believe. Uh, 21 to hit for... I had a precision strike. That is a hit, yeah. For uh, eight damage. Okay. Top of the round with Pluto. It's your turn. You and, are restrained again um, by the tendrils. I'm going to try to get out of it. Okay. Using your action? Yep. Okay. Uh, I get a 20. Uh, a 20. Uh, you do have to roll with disadvantage if you're rolling oh, athletics. Yeah. Because yeah, the, the tendrils do give you disadvantage. Please, over 12. Yeah, 21. So, so 20. you do break out. You snap out. And then I'm going to action surge and just start wailing on her. Nice. <laughs> and that's my battle cry. <laughs> <laughs> I hope if everyone knows. Oh my gosh. The struggle is real. Uh, 14. Not enough. No. It's in pizza. <sighs> oh my oh man. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, mm, 17. Again. Oh my gosh. She slams it out of the way the vines are like a point defense she's using to protect herself um Pluto, my worst nightmares <laughs> i know i'm screaming on the inside the hound was your worst uh, yeah but now my hounds exist and now i'm afraid of plants uh anything else pluto uh, you managed to break out you action surge but you the attacks I don't can't. land. It's she, uh, man, I rolled a four and a three. It was brutal. Okay, okay uh, I just have to stand there. Yep. I don't want to knock her prone. Uh, I'm going to hit up Zephyr Strike as my bonus action, and I'm going to move 60 feet out. <laughs> End it, Veo. And so get me as far back as I can go. Get my advantage on my first shot. Ooh. Um... 23. That is a hit. Boom. 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 <laughs> Love Zephyr Strike. It adds that extra. Nice. <laughs> 35 damage. There we go. As you <laughs> retreat out of the room and level your longbow, you see the critical artery in audrey's neck one vine that connects all the others and you shoot it right through and it snaps like a twig and she drops like a pile of vines and i catch sebastian <laughs> within audrey's body looking around through here within audrey's body and and beyond you can see that the broken cave adjacent to you is a burrow 
that leads to the shaft of the well. No! You knew! And you can see that the vi- <laughs> there's vines that are saw- like intangibly growing up it that I guess that you can surmise the veggie pygmies were going mm. up to collect food for Audrey down here below. I'm so glad we didn't come in the well. Yeah, I was, I was gonna, <laughs> I'm so happy. I was going to say, if we had come down the well, it would have been so much worse. We would have we not been, been prepared. Like, hey, what's in yeah. here? Oh, God, God. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you find amongst here like there are ruins. There's clearly Audrey has been eating people because <laughs> there's like digested bits of bone and muck and everything. And within the rest of this, you are able to find the rest of the plants and materials. Um, many of them have been singed, but the but Audrey herself is composed of almost everything of so many of the things that you need. I slowly squish Audrey into my bag of holding. <laughs> <laughs> I help you. Uh, yeah, I help. Well, we'll each grab a corner. And... <laughs> well, guys, I didn't expect to fight a giant plant monster today, but it only bit me most of me. <laughs> yeah, oh. you're missing a good chunk. Yeah, there's a chunk. God, I bleed a lot. Yeah, but you can magic that back, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. No, my most of me. What what about like uh, assorted um, adventurer uh, equipment that is undigestible by plant? Um, yeah, looking around are several little bits of, of trinkets. Um, you manage uh, to see that there is a small cloth doll that's been skewered with needles in the remnants of a backpack. Several teeth from some unknown beasts. Um, a pretty fine looking... Um, arcane focus type wand um, as well um, as a few multicolored um, brass orbs um, and marbles in a bag together. So do you want those? Do you want but some marbles? But beyond, uh, beyond the rest of this, um, the, the only other thing that you find buried beneath all the others is a iron rod that has a button on the handle. Oh, can I press the button? Can I press the button? <laughs> Wait, I'll use my mage hand to press the button. Go for it. Okay. I stand back 30 feet. <laughs> press the button with my mage hand. Nothing happens. Oh. I go up to it and I take it in my hand and I press it. It with doesn't it. move. It's stuck there. Oh. Mm. You press the button and it releases. Oh. Uh, I have a... I don't know. What this is. <laughs> I've heard of it before. I've read about it in books. Nerd. I press the button Nerd. again as I'm standing. When you waiting. press it there, it, it just stays there. Like when you press it and let go of it, it just the, the the iron rod just floats in space after you press the button. What is this? What is this? It seems like some sort of immovable rod. <laughs> <laughs> when the button's pushed, I can't move it, making it immovable. Oh, okay. Add. <laughs> I'm gonna keep this for now. Well, I try to figure it out. <laughs> what about magic. the creepy voodoo doll? Is that just a thing? It's a creepy looking voodoo doll, but it is not magical. Yeah, we should leave that in the plant matter. <laughs> just throw it back in. Oh. What if I wanted to dress it up like somebody and stick pins in it? Oh, you can still do that, I guess. I don't want it. No. I'm, I'm good with my... Uh, what did I get? This wand that isn't as cool as my wand. But yeah. now I have two <clears throat> wands. Now you can do... um. Dual casting. Wands akimbo. <laughs> wow. Is we, there anything else you would like to do here? I can't believe we survived. Uh, uh, we should go rest. Maybe in the our, either in the tower or we can go back. I can make a little hut for us to rest in. Yeah, but don't use your magic. Just, we'll just go back I, to the tower. It doesn't oh, require. No? We could Is also... It long um, rest, it's a ritual. Do you want a long it, rest? It stays up long enough for a long yeah, rest, right? Oh, yeah, that's a long rest, yeah. We could hide in here. Yeah, I can put up the tiny hut, and nobody, nobody will bother us in there. Yeah. Down here, it, it is safe enough from the haze down here that you could rest. <gasps> Do we have another sanctuary now? Is it also safe to say, like, with all the the materials down here, this could also be like a lab? Yes. Oh, how's yeah. a? Slurp? It's well appointed. It's it's secure. Slurps. He's cowering in a corner. Slurp. We killed. I can't believe it. That's amazing. Yeah, that's why you work for us now. Okay. You're going to be head I could stay down. here and protect this place for you. Head of potions. Yes. Protect this place. Keep producing I really potions. don't want to go outside. The sky sounds really scary. It, it is. is. There's lots of rain, too. You wouldn't like Oh, that. wet. 
I mean, I'm mud, so I kind of like being wet, but I hate the sky. You don't want to be too much water. Water and earth. Good quality between each, you know, balance. Good balance. Um, How about we, can you use mold earth to block the well entrance? Yep. I I start to, I take some time to cast mold earth and like block off the well. (laughs) What's your next move? After this? Yeah. Long rest. So after our long rest, I assume we're going to head back to the commander. We're going to brew some of those potions. And then I think we're getting ready for um, taking on the Lord of the Feast. Because, uh, yeah, that yeah. that and the, um, finding the heirs, mm-hmm. the mage tower. Yeah, I think Lord of the Feast is the most pressing matter because the gnolls are still yeah. pressing against Temple Yeah, Gate. we need yeah. to deal with that. So but we need to get to the cathedral. With, um you are able to concoct up several doses of this stuff that, surmising from Oscar Yorin's notes and a few more days of work, you'll be able to brew this continually. It's going to have to be you that makes it, Sebastian. Working together, it's possible to make a couple doses a day, but it will require regular work from you. And... You'll probably have to be. You'll probably in a few weeks. You'll be on be in a similar position with materials. Once again, because well, there's lots of elder. You, you'll be able to find eldritch lilies and delirium. Looking at this together and looking even through the remnants of Oscar Yorin's notes, Queen Lenore is going to be dependent on this. Guys, we're on borrowed time with Queen Lenore, so we need to we need to fast track this. So- we need to find a replacement. That involves getting into the castle. In order to get into the castle, we need the badge. Badges. Badges. But yeah. first, we want to make sure that we finish the job that we started with Temple Gate. I think the queen, as much as we're keeping her alive, we have a mission from her. And I think if we can accomplish that mission, mm-hmm. she'd be happy to go. But we need to figure that out first. We need to have that replacement for the throne before we can let the queen go peacefully and until then i think we need to make enough supplies to keep her going at least again for a couple weeks until we can figure it out and i know like i rumors are that the mage's tower has a badge in it Mm -hmm. it also has some answers that i'm looking for about my mother so that seems like a likely place to check out however i know that you want to get to the cathedral and that should yes. be our next. We're we're most of the way there. We have made a huge impact against the Knolls, and I think we could convince mm. the Hooded Lanterns and the Silver Order to push further. I also think that there might be a badge in in the cathedral as well, because there was the High Flame Keeper that stayed there and had one. So, so two badges maybe potentially, because um, we know there's the Lord Commander has one, the Queen of Thieves has one, Saint Selena's might have one. Uh, the cathedral, the mage tower, and the grand guild hall are some of the areas that the queen told us about. Queen of Sounds like we have our work cut out for us and where we are now on a time crunch before the queen... Decides we're not useful anymore? No, before the, oh, queen, the queen is not useful anymore. I was anymore. like, which queen? <laughs> queen Lenore. <laughs> queen Lenore. <laughs> yeah. Too many queens. No, that queen will take care. Yeah. We'll deal with. Okay. Well... Back to make supplies. Indeed. And that's where we'll end for the night. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Monty Martin. I've been joined by our, my very good friends, Kelly, Jill, and Joe, uh, playing Sebastian, Pluto, and Veo, respectively. Of course, I am off traveling for the rest of June, so Dungeons of Drakenheim will be on a bit of a break until we come back on July 9th for more of the ongoing series as we find out what happens in the cathedral, the academy tower, and how our heroes will negotiate the various factions of Drakenheim. Mm. Looking very much forward to it. I'm glad I got a couple weeks to travel and get prepared (laughs) because this is all coming to a head. I'm really excited, and I hope you'll join us again in a couple weeks. However, uh, we've got lots of cool stuff going on between then. 
Our regular YouTube series, of course, will continue. So check that out at youtube.com slash Dungeon Dudes because Kelly and I have filmed up a bunch of exciting episodes that uh, should last us through to then. And so check those out. They'll still be dropping every Thursday. And next week and the week after on the 18th and on the 11th and the 18th, next week on the 11th, I'm going to have time to run a very brief Q&A with me as Dungeon Master. We can talk about anything DM, whether it's Dungeons of Drakenheim questions that you want to have for me. It will probably be a little spoilerific. We'll see. I'll answer some cool stuff or just questions that you have about getting advice for DMing. And then we'll turn that around on the 18th where Kelly, Jill, and Joe will all be here together to answer questions as players in Drakenheim. So again, questions about building characters or about the characters in Drakenheim, you can ask them then then as well. But then after that, Kelly's got some exciting plans. On the 25th, I'm going to be running a one-shot Monster of the Week. If you're unfamiliar with Monster of the Week, it is a 2d6 system where uh, it's kind of based on the idea of um, horror movies and TV shows like Buffy the Vampire Slayer and things like that, where every week the characters have to face off against a new horrible monster. So I've written out a fun little one shot and we're going to be seeing some new interesting characters. We're being joined by uh, a friend of ours named Mitch and he's going to be joining us and we're going to be um, doing some horror movie style role playing. It's going to be so fun. Uh, and that's happening on the 25th, same time that we usually run. So it's going to be from 6 to uh, 9 o'clock Eastern time uh, right here on Twitch. And we're going to see how that goes. And that's something that um, I'm very excited about. And if it turns out awesome, I'm going to see if maybe I can pop in for some more of those down the road. And so hopefully you'll all join us there to watch me uh, try to run an awesome horror campaign. Yeah, and then we'll probably be taking the week of July 2nd off entirely, I think. And then we will be back on July 9th with Dungeons of Drakenheim, picking up the story right where we left off. So thank you so much for your understanding on that. Um, probably going forward, we'll continue to do a bit of a hiatus around December and in the summer as mm -hmm. well. So it's probably what you can expect from us going forward. We we. We love playing D&D &D every week. We don't like taking time off, but sometimes we need to. So that'll be that. Thank you so much. And of course, continue to enjoy all the cool stuff that we're doing here. Uh, with that, um, we've got a few more thank yous to send out. Special thank you to Axe and Shield for providing us with the awesome gaming accessories. We saw the initiative tracker. He also makes amazing flight stands, terrain stands, all sorts of cool stuff. So check out Axe and Shield. And uh, as always, Tabletop Audio for uh, supporting our ambient music, a background, uh, elevate your own game, uh, www.tabletopaudio.com. It's all free. Uh, let us know what you think. Thanks to 100 Years Boar for the amazing voiceover in our intro video, always introducing our amazing adventures in Drakenheim. Catch them out streaming here on Twitch. And of course, we use Terrain by Dwarven Forge and Miniatures by Hero Forge and WizKids, including that amazing Audrey miniature, which I've never been able was... to use <laughs> in such an honest way before. I'm so glad, finally. It's like one of those ones that's been in the closet for so long, not being used, and now there she is in all her glory. And it was a great battle. And the baboons and the jackals. Thank you for the baboons. Yeah. The baboons. Yeah. The baboons. Yeah. I want to call her Seymour. <laughs> yeah. And of course, tonight's episode of Dungeons of Drakenheim was sponsored by our awesome friends at Skull Splitter Dice, who powered the die rolls in this episode, of which there were many exciting ones. So you can check them out at SkullsplitterDice.com if you want to pick up a set of these awesome heavy metal dice for yourself. We've totally become metal dice snobs. It's really hard <laughs> yeah. to go back to plastic after you got used to them so and make sure you use the discount code ddudes at checkout to save 15 percent off your very first order we almost forgot to uh give a big thank you to kyle behind the scenes Woo! yes <gasps> is he gonna no 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 uh, yeah uh, and of course a <laughs> massive thank you to kyle uh our our stream producer who keeps everything running behind the scenes he was a huge, uh, huge help. We just got all this crazy stuff worked out with the stream in the past week with the new PC and the new streaming setup and everything like that. We hope you enjoyed it, by the way. Uh, we really tried to do some improvements to the audio and video, despite the fact having the same microphones and cameras, but we got a new PC powering the whole thing, a brand new internet connection. So we hope that worked out really, really, really well. And a big thank you as well to Clayton, who gets our episodes up on YouTube as well for us and produces our show on YouTube. 
Also, uh, if you are loving what we do and you want to help support our work, you can check out our Patreon. You can find it by following the links below or at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. And when you join our Patreon, you get access to our Discord channel where we talk with you all the time about all sorts of silly things, <laughs> often relating to D&D. But sometimes not. Sometimes not. Um, sometimes we just talk about favorite movies, TV shows, video games, or we just, I don't know, Life. cats and dogs. and I'll probably post Life some photos general, from my yeah. trip. Yeah. Ooh. I'm going to be seeing some cool stuff in Italy and Germany, so that'll yes. be a lot of fun. As I well. want to see some photos. You're going some... to some castles. Probably. Yes, I am. Ooh. I am. I'm very excited about that. Some also, we're going to be at inspo. Origins. Yes. Uh, finally, Kelly, myself, Clayton, and Kyle will be going to Origins uh, in columbus ohio next week uh we're going to be doing some cool things there um we're going to be joining our friends at realmsmith.tv to paint some miniatures during origins that'll probably be thursday next week um we'll post the times up probably on our, our social channels and then we'll just be hanging out we'll do the true dungeon we'll post some photos of our, our cool stuff but if you are going to be at origins Drop us a line through Twitter or direct message or anything like that, and we would love to roll some dice with you or just say hello. So don't be afraid. If you're going to Origins, please let us know, um, and we'll have a ton of fun there, too. I'm excited. And we'll send our love. Yeah, as always. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time in the Dungeons of Drakenheim. Bye.